to go. Oh, welcome uh, committee members and members public. Uh, please ensure that your cell phones are either switched off or on silent mode while the meeting is in progress. If a cell phone rings, uh, we will need to uh, just stop the meeting and wait for the device to be muted. This meeting is being held in the supper room of the Waihinga Centre, Martin Borough Town Hall, and it has been live streamed this morning and will be available to view on Council's YouTube channel. The emergency exits for this room are the door you came in and the one that Councillor Gray is coming in behind me. If we need to evacuate the building, please use one of these exits and assemble outside by the playground. Please remain at the assembly area until the building has been confirmed clear. Uh, in the event that, um, that public participation gets a little too passionate, um, we will adjourn the meeting uh, until it's safe for us to reconvene. Members of council or this committee and members of our staff will congregate in the office area behind me if this action is necessary. And I certainly hope that it won't be. Uh, I invite Councillor Bosley to open this morning's meeting with a karakia. Thank you. Uh, kia ora, uh, te marino, kia whakapapa whanau te moana. Te huarahi mā tātou i te rangi nei, ara atu, ara mai. Thank you. Uh, we have apologies this morning from Councillor Elam and Councillor Woodcock. Any apologies this morning? No. Uh, Councillor Gray, will you accept the apology? Absolutely. Do I have an ex a seconder? Councillor Maynard, thank you. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye, aye, aye. All those against, please say no. The motion is carried. Are there any conflicts of interest to declare this morning? No, perfect. We will now move on to the hearing of submissions. Uh, first, we have Samuel Carbett, who will be joining us. His submission is on page 44 of the submissions summary report. Mr. Carbett, please come and join us uh, at the front here. You are allocate, allocated 10 minutes for your submission this morning. It is suggested that you make your presentation about five to six minutes, allowing the committee some time to engage in questions. Uh, your allotted time includes both your presentation and the question time. Um, so, sorry. Sorry. sorry? What, you said 44. Age 44, yes. Age 44. Oh, are you on Stella? Are you on Stella? Are you on Stella? So just yeah. in this, um, so, oh, sorry. Uh, hearing submissions. It's just the first submission one. number six. Depending on the Yeah, there's very good Oh, cool. Okay. Yes, and then the report comes up. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> That's the numbers, sorry. Yeah, uh, just to confuse everyone and keep everyone on their toes. Yes, it was all okay. I literally just had that a few minutes ago, Elsa. <laughs> the submissions have all been read. It's just that it's quite good to follow along, know where your position yeah. sits before you get started. <laughs> right, when you're ready. Kia ora, councillors. First of all, I just wanted to thank um, the uh, all of you, staff, and the South by Raptor District Council for um, having the vision to prepare the Featherston Master Plan, um, as I believe it will serve a blueprint for maintaining a vibrant and resilient community, uh, while also enabling and supporting future growth uh, in the, the whole region, as well as in the town of Featherston. Um, I'm a relatively new resident of Featherston, having just moved here last year, um, but I love the small town community uh, feel of the town, uh, the tranquility and the overall beauty of the wider wrap and the, the whole uh, region. Um, I'm a transportation planner uh, by, by trade um, and I've worked uh, for more than 25 years in, in the field. So I've worked on many master plans uh, similar to this, generally on the transportation side of things, you know, planning 
everything from roading to active transportation facilities, public transport, and things of that nature. Um, and I was really impressed by a number of the proposals and recommendations in the plan. Uh, notably, uh, many of the uh, streetscape improvements around the town center, I think what was referred to as the, uh, the town center heart improvements, um, as I believe they will improve the Main Street exp experience, uh, which will in turn uh, likely attract uh, more business, uh, more vibrancy, and more visitors uh, to the town center. Um, I thought, and I'm, I'm sure that you received many submissions. It's probably one of the more controversial elements, um, but the um, the proposed vehicle uh, closure, the, the at-grade crossing on Fox Street. Um, however, I supported, I think the benefits far outweigh the cost of, the, of that proposal, um, which I sort of see as safety improvements, the ability for uh, Kiwi Rail to run more service along tracks. Obviously, the more service you have, the more potential conflict um, on that crossing. And I think it also enables a number of uh, pedestrian improvements along that corridor. I also think that the main cost is uh, somewhat somewhat reduced vehicle capacity access for the community. I think there's plenty of capacity in the roading network to, to handle that, some of the di diversions that would be required from that, uh, that closure. Uh, I also support other elements of the master plan, including the proposed shared space for Birdwood Street, uh, potential pedestrian cycling, cycling connection to the wider map of Moana, and um, the uh, formalized pedestrian connection between the medical center and Conserver Street. I wasn't sure if that was a, a formal recommendation, but it was referred to several places throughout the plan, and I know a number of people also submitted on that. Um, so I think that would be a, a, a really valuable pedestrian connection to add or incorporate if it isn't already part of the formal recommendations. Um, I also support the uh, zoning changes, allowing higher density housing, uh, apartments and whatnot, um, as I think that's just good planning, providing more housing services already exist, whether it's uh, you know, transport, uh, water, um, and, and of course all the businesses and whatnot. I think Featherston would benefit from having sort of more uh, more people living right in the town center. I think just create uh, more vibrancy, eyes on the street. As poet Robert Burns famously wrote, the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. And I, I, I use that quote because over the course of my career, I've seen many planning efforts lose steam for a variety of reasons. And typically it's sort of three factors. It's um, changing in leadership, sort of political, um, political changes, um, it's lack of funding, or it's um, lack of community support. And I don't have much to say about political changes, how much we can do on that front. Um, but I, what, what I will say on the other two is that you're clearly following a very robust public consultation process, as I can see from all the submissions, from this hearing, from the numerous workshops that have been held. And so I'm, uh, I think that's great. I think that's excellent public process. I would encourage you to, to um, consider all the feedback you hear today and through all the submissions and, um, and really adopt and endorse a plan that does represent the collective um, desire from the community. Um, and on the second front, on the sort of lack of funding, um, I guess I, I it did seem like from the implementation plan that there could there may be some gaps or I, I, maybe I just didn't fully understand off the, the table, but I guess if, if there are some gaps, I would encourage staff and, and counselors to flesh that out a bit further. Um, one question I had is I wasn't sure whether it was a constrained or an unconstrained implementation plan. So what I mean by that is, 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 is there funding earmarked for all of those line items in the implementation plan. I saw some things that had indicative costs and, and they had sort of responsible entity, but I wasn't sure if there was money behind that or if it was kind of an aspirational project that needed money. So maybe just a little more clarity on that would be helpful. 
Um, I did see a lot on the, the, there were the elements, I think it was one through six, that some of which had cost, some didn't, and then it was seven through nine, which I think were all of the sort of water related projects that had, did have costs and they were quite high. <laughs> So I did wonder like what the relationship was between the one through six and then the seven to nine. And with water projects, it's the kind of thing that's really important to all of us. We want, you know, sort of clean water and good wastewater facilities, but it doesn't always inspire the imagination or it doesn't get people always fired up. So I do want to, I guess my, my comment on that was let's not um, sacrifice that at the sort of the benefit of something else that's sort of a nice, a nice to have versus like a must have project. So I did wonder just what the relationship was between those two. So, um, and in that, I think that's, that's sort of concludes my comments. I, again, thank you very much for initiating this planning effort. I think it's really important and I look forward to seeing what, what comes of it. Thank you very much, both for your submission and your time here this morning. Councillors, do we have any questions for Mr. Carver? Just a comment, actually. Just, mm. um, nice way to start the day. Thank you, Sam. Not if we actually get somebody saying nice things about what I did during the day. Uh, but it was really positive. And, uh, yeah, thanks for taking that time. Mm. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, yes, I'd like to say the same, but also, too, nice you bring in your, your background with some very um, helpful comments on the plan. So thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah, just I endorse that. I think uh, it's great to start the day with somebody so positive and uh, yeah, moving forward. Thanks very much, Sam. Much appreciate it. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Right. So next we will invite Leslie Christian to come to the table. So this submission is submission number 63. And depending on where you're looking, at I and my tech, it is page 328. Page what, you? May 328. But in your, in your it sits this is page 63, submission 63. So it should be the second one in. So if you're looking in Stella, you should be in the pack that's just for this, for this morning. And then they're all in the We'll be here in two moments. So what page we got on yours? Three twenty-eight. So it's one of the um handwritten ones in pack two. Oh, oh. Uh, so Leslie, just for your information again, um, you do have ten minutes to speak. Um, you can assume that we have read your submission as it was um, presented, so you can refer to that, but feel free to provide extra information. If you speak for slightly less than or a lot of 10 minutes, then you have some time for questions at the end. When you're ready. Thank you. I would also endorse my thanks to the council for your foresight in a very thorough community consultation. I have lived in or about Featherston for 47 years, and this is the first time we have been given such a good opportunity to, to feed back. I have for the last four years lived at 6B Lion Street, which on your design map too, um, shows our property. We look across Cherry Tree uh, Park from our lounge conservatory and veranda, straight at the intersection of Fitzherbert, Birdwood and Lion Street. Um, on designer map. Two, by the way, um, <laughs> Birdwood Street should be called Lion Street. <laughs> <laughs> um, the building opposite Cherry Tree Park is the um, Cell Engine Museum and the Heritage Museum, and not shown 
The next property is Spedeston School. So Lion Street has the Fellington Museum, Featherston School, Cherry Tree Park, my property, and the St John's Ambulance Hall in close proximity to that intersection. Okay, so that sets the thing. Now, in the four years that we have on sat gazing out the window at a very nice view, we have an extremely good knowledge of what happens in this little section of town. And the first thing that we noted was probably something that is going to of 50% of the call-outs answered by the fire brigade. The engines zoomed down Fox Street, turned, come down this little piece of Birdwood Street, sound the asylums and horns, cross State Highway 2, in one go, straight down Lion Street, and they're on to State Highway 53 or the northeastern side of Featherston. Quickly, easily, it's the default route. My very, very strong feeling was if you impede that flow, lives will be lost. My next point about this intersection is on this little end of Fox Street here is the Featherston Public Toilet. Accessed with great urgency <laughs> by a lot of people. I absolutely have to come over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's again, there is a real need for that area to have as much parking as you can give it. Do not narrow it. People need it. And they are in too much of a hurry to take a lot of time walking. I mean, they're already <laughs> before they're in there. Also, a lot of trucks coming from Masterton North zoom up that little Fox Street intersection, stop, use the facilities, have the arrest break, sometimes go up and get a cup of coffee, turn down Birdwood, back up and over the hill to Wellington. The same applies with the trucks and buses and tour buses and uh, buses full of rugby chaps, etc. Coming over, turn in, often that little piece of Birdwood Street is where the logging trucks stop while again the facilities are used. It's easy for them to do that. It's an essential piece of convenient usage that Featherson gets a lot of. The, the ambulances zoom up that same street to get to the medical centre or up to the sports ground where the um, helicopters lift people away. Again, do not impede the flow of emergency vehicles. We need them. The other thing I would like to point out is this little planting at the end of what should be Lion Street. It's going to get in the way of the tourist buses stopping to go to our museum, three or four school buses coming and going many times during the day, and an absolutely chaotic scene at about three o'clock with all the parents turning up to meet their kids as they leave school. 
30 or 40 cars are all jockeying, jockeying to fit into this area, pick up their kids and rush off with them again. Why would you want to narrow such an important intersection? It, as I've said, it's stupid, knowing I was going to talk to it. <laughs> and I repeat, it would be stupid to do that. I can see no reason why you would want to. After all, we have the very lovely tree blossom park right there. We don't need more trees. We have another park on the other side. We don't need street plantings that are going to both narrow and inhabit the site of turning real book. Um, I have one question. And I see there is a red line here. Somewhere in the back of the plan, I would like to see the paper road that goes through from Fox Street to the old medical centre, which is now the Chicken and the Fox. Frog, sorry. <laughs> um, I'd like to see that opened to give extra parking for people using those conveniences. It's actually required. There's a real um, congestion of traffic in front of the loos. <laughs> Any questions? Thank you so much, Leslie, and thank you for sharing your very unique viewpoint um, yes. with us because um, you, you certainly shared a number of insights that you would only have from, from living where you do. So it's been very helpful. I think you posed um, a great question or certainly suggestion around um, the access to the parking by chicken and frog. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Councillors, any comments or questions? Yeah, thanks, Lily. Um, yeah, you certainly have an insight that none of us would ever <laughs> get. <laughs> I'm really interested in your comments about the, flock, the proposed closure of the railway crossing at, at Fox Street. Um, and Kiwi Rail is obviously going to come and talk to the community and and directly on this, but assuming that a just for the sake of argument, one crossing is going to close. Uh, yep, Hill Street. Hill Street. What What's your view on which one would be? Hill Street. If they close that to to vehicular traffic, um, they can extend the shuttle activities with longer trains and more trains and things like that, without inhibiting the flow of the rest of the. So, so your view would be to close Bell Street, not Bell Street. Bell Street, not. Okay. So, Thank you. Um, and after all, Johnson Street is already beautifully landscaped, nice and wide. Um, it's a good, again, straight access through. Keeping Fox Street open stops a lot of traffic coming into State Highway 2. Thank you. Who knows? No one else shows for Leslie. No, you've done a wonderful job. And I know when Leslie, thank you so much. Time and motion study, thank you. Yes. Yes. So, listen, it can be good timing as well. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> Our next presenter this morning is Paul Broughton. Please come and join us. So, if you're using the Stella Pack, he is presentation. Submission number 20, but the next one in line. <laughs> Good morning, Paul. Thank you for being with us this morning. A little bit sad you didn't bring any cheese. Other than yeah, that, we're very <laughs> pleased to see you. Yeah. Uh, no, don't tease us. <laughs> Thanks very much for the opportunity to uh, to present or to meet on uh, my submission. Um, I thought it might be worthwhile starting with putting a little bit of context around where I'm coming from. And um, let's, yeah, 12 years ago, uh, my partner, Ryan, and I decided to invest in Featherston. So we invested in a number of ways. We invested in commercial real estate, we invested in uh, setting up businesses, and ultimately we ended up living in the as well. So given that, context, uh, we are, in a, I wouldn't say unique, but a very good position to sort of view the proposed changes in terms of zoning and car parking or, or Main Street uh, 
alterations and improvements, etc. Um, just a bit of context before I came over the hill to live currently in Peterston. Um, I was responsible for developing and managing one of the of their largest property portfolio in Wellington, which was commercial uh, retail. So I'm not, uh, I have had a bit of dealing in terms of things like paying and medical equipment and uh, so I do understand a little bit about that. Um, so my submission was pretty focused, looking at all the things that I know, so I didn't really commentate a lot on, uh, on the other aspects of the master plan, although it was thoroughly the research. Um, but the two areas, as I say, that I'm focusing on is the car parking side and the zoning. So if you look at the, uh, the car parking issue, um, we absolutely love our locals. We get fabulous support from our locals, but in all honesty, that is not going to keep my doors open. We, have, we totally rely on traffic coming through. That's always been the case. When people ask me why the hell did I open a tea shop in Hedderston, it was logical. It's a location, it's strategic. Everyone that comes over the hill comes through Hedderston. It's our job to make them stop. And we have made them stop, which is fantastic. But what did you see you doing that? So, majority of the business is external to Hedderston for us. Uh, obviously, there's a heavy reliance on. So people don't you know, just wander around town with the rain and the rest of it. So in the in the area between Wakefield Street and uh, the railway track, there's 15 car parks. That's all we that's all we have. Of those 15 car parks, two are pretty much permanently taken up by one resident who was obviously part of those car parks. So that's an indication of what happens with the parks. Um, so you know, look at the proposal to put um, some two pedestrian crossings in that area between the uh, Wakefield and the railway, that's going to take out a number of car parks. And I'm not entirely convinced that having, I, I appreciate people's view that they think they may need pedestrian crossing. In the 12 or 11 years we've been there, I've never seen anyone hit by a have seen near misses and accidents on pedestrian crossing outside the supermarket area, but not down the city. Um, so the, the removal of those car parks would be critical to us. Uh, we really struggle as it is. If you if you spend any time down there on the weekend, turn over those car parks is phenomenal. As soon as someone calls out, someone comes up, and it's, it is quite critical to our business for that. So in terms of um, the planning and designing side of things, uh, my objection to changing it from industrial, relatively industrial in that section, which is quite different from further down, uh, the industrial, uh, mm -hmm. as far as I understand it, uh, residential is not a permitted use in industrial zone, although existing use, such as our own, is permitted. Um, if you go to a mixed use model, uh, and I'm not sure, okay, I think the majority of your submissions that you received were in support. But I suspect that most of those people are actually residents on that street. And on the face of it, it sounds mixed use sounds like a good idea, vibrancy, more people, et cetera, et cetera. But in terms of the, re the realistic side of being on State Highway 2, what that will do was will be removing in pretty much all the car parks by virtue of the fact that people will have maybe one or two car parks with which is the residential unit, they have visitors, those visitors will stay for a length of time. A really good example, and unfortunately hasn't happened yet, is really up at Cleveland Street. Which, is the, which has a right consent for 11 residential apartments and one commercial. Under the plan, 12 car parks were required. The developer came up with nine. And after consultation with NZTA, uh, that was reduced to six. Six car parks, 11 residential units, and a commercial. That would be a lot of pioneer. Pioneer relies heavily on people stopping. It's quite extraordinary. You will not get so there's the ability for that, you know, that those things to happen if you change the, uh, the use from industrial to mixed use down that end of town. Uh, I don't believe turning the balance of the industrial into residential uh, to be worthwhile. We've got, it's not as if we have a, a lack of green spots we could get treated. So I, I really struggle to understand why you want to intensify given one of the things I've just mentioned. Um, yeah, so that's kind of where I'm coming from. I think it's, it's vital that we have those car parks. Uh, we need to have that 
uh, that term under. We need to rely on external um, uh, revenue from Wellington and from Marston and Martinborough and the rest of it. So that's, it will have quite a important impact on life as it's a life, let alone others of the street. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, have we got any questions for Paul from uh, Councillor Olds? Well, thanks very much for your submission. And I, I really hear what you say in terms of car parks and, and um, our, our visiting um, our visiting people from over the hill that uh, frequent Featherston on a regular basis struggle at the time at peak times to find uh, sufficient car parking. There's no magic solution for the way our town's laid out at the moment. I mean, if you've got some thoughts well, I'm, I'm, I'm responding to what's been put on the table. Yes, I, I realise that, yeah, and I'm, I'm very keen. Yes, to... Oh, absolutely. We are um, a development can't provide the required parks under the plan. Uh, council can take financial contribution mm -hmm. to set aside to provide for car parking elsewhere. So if land becomes available, council can teach us that. That could have been done in the past, that hasn't, that can be done in the future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Councillor Flynn. The, um, the proposal for a walkway from the uh, medical centre area through to the main street, would that make a significant difference? It's a huge car parking area. There's, it is a big car parking area. I, I'd be interested in Paul's perspective. It's about visibility of people seeing that. Um, signage helps, but gosh, you know, signage, most people don't think. But you, know, you, can, you can try. I mean, I know council proactively been out and marked all the car park spaces on side streets when we had this issue. That's right. Yep. And that has helped. Um you got to use them. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I think that car park, yeah, if it's visible, yeah. Mm. But the people are going to I find it really interesting when we talk car parks because Greytown has the same issue about car park. And when I go through the up first thing in the morning, the people who are parking in the car parks on Main Street are actually the business owners. Yeah, okay. And you go, my God, you're complaining about car parks now. You've raised an issue in Featherston about residents parking in there. Um, and dare I say, and I'm going to say it, but I, you know, I'm not a fan of this, but um, is it worthwhile bringing in time zone parking to, along Featherston to help the businesses to actually say, well, if you live there and you've got car parking elsewhere, use it because you're actually taking up spaces for, and I, and I know there's an issue about compliance and so on. So I hesitate to raise it, but is that something for, which would change behaviours to enable um, the benefit for businesses in Featherston? To car park, you've got no business. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, you, you talked about the number of car, uh, like the, the, the residents I'm referring to, they have two or three car parks, yet they fill that up with caravans or whatever, and they put their cars on the street. So you'll have that issue if you go for mixed years. Um, regardless of it, now it would be down to one car park per unit. Um, for example, when resource consent was issued for our uh, our site, it was two car parks per unit. We've got eight car parks and a disabled. If you went now with the resource consent, entity TA would say no. So then we ask, is it worth bringing in a time limit? Time limit thing, yeah. Again, you say policing it. We've got a 10 minute one in front of the hot balls. What is the pot of oh, no, I don't know. The bottle store next time. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not. Okay. You're a dairy, yeah. No, it's a 10 key level. The issue is you've got to, you've got to enforce it. But yeah. Yeah. The other things I don't, I don't want people to say you've got 20 minutes or 30 minutes of business to me. That's kind of counterproductive. We want to stay and spend. But that is it. Yeah. That is a solution that I don't know if it's going to be. So have you have you raised this in Greytown? Have you no, 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 and um, I'm sure I'll see you in the store soon. Yeah, I'm sure we will. <laughs> I, I saw Russell taking lots of notes about car parking, so yeah. he's got that one firmly in there. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Paul. Um, so the next presenter is Leon. And we number four in your online pack or submission number 21. <laughs> Mine's in order. Mine's in order. Oh, okay. So you're just a painter for mine. Yeah, it's 
so right, so right. Right, is everyone ready? Yeah. Wonderful. When you're ready, good sir. Thank you, uh, thank you for having me class. I'm not going to um, um, delve into my submission too much. Um, I have a background in fire emergency. Um, I'm a fire engineer. Um, I've been a temporary resident in Featherston for about 22 years. I have a Sonic Hall on the corner of Fox Street and spent a lot of time trying to make it more than a derelict building. Um, and I'm essentially now a full-time resident um, who's made the decision to move out of the big smoke and, and come and live full-time in Featherston. And with that in mind, um, a lot of what you might see in my presentation and my submission, um, which might have negative connotations, I'd like to say that I do love living in Featherston. I love the slow pace, the wide roads, um, the beautiful parks and, and spaces that we have. And so I suppose a lot of my negativity comes from the fact that some of what's being proposed from my perspective is going to strangle a lot of that free open space. Um, and I have doubt about um, the, the value um, of doing that when we are also trying to um, increase the population, increase the visitation uh, from outside the area. Um, and I've been unable to get the assurance that I was thinking in terms of how that would be addressed. And, the sorts of things that come to mind is for 20 of the 22 years, I've been walking about and down the gutters in my street, um, which has now been stopped, which is great. Um, but when it floods, it still floods across the whole street. And to invite somebody to come and visit is problematic. You know, that's why we're getting our name as, as being the the town with the supermarket that you've landed into and as you go in your gun boots. Um, and so for me, I think the key issues are, are about um, providing the infrastructure to support that growth and development. And when I look at things like the new what I'll call subdivisions or streets that have been um, currently built in the town, um, I see lots of issues. They're very small streets, the cul-de-sacs, essentially. Um, lots of people are going to be moving in there in small land masses, building large-ish houses and having very little space for additional cars and multiple cars that many families will have. So they're going to be parking in the street. That's going to create congestion. And... A lot of what I've said in my submission is about the concerns I have about that, connect, that congestion. And I think there's a lot of people made some very good points about uh, what they've seen and what's currently happening. Um, one of my concerns is the, the railway crossing on Fitzgerald Street, um, where we've now put in a medium barrier, which has blocked the access to car parking at Chemist Shop. The bakery uh, that has an impact on um, their turnover, the people that stop to go there because it's not as accessible as it used to be. And in my view, it's provided a real danger. I was parked outside the chemist shop the other week, a truck and trailer came past, um, it nearly squashed me against the car and it fishtailed around me because it now has a much narrower space in which to go past at the railway crossing. To me, that's that's a hazard that we've now ended up with as a consequence of the upgrade of that crossing. Um, that doesn't make a lot of engineering sense and it will probably in the finish end up with that crossing um, that car has been taken away because it's a danger. Um, so the negative aspects of my of submission are about some of those issues. And I'd like to think that 
you know, the outcomes of this hearing and, and other work that we do from here on will address some of those issues. I like the sound of putting an a, a access way from the chemist shop or from the um, community centre and the, the doctor's surgery. And I think that needs to provide motor vehicle access, not just walking access, because many of the people who use that chemist shop are not physically able to walk the sort of distances. So if we're going to put something in, it seems to me that the best plan would be to put either a complete roadway access through with maybe a turnaround so you have to come through and go back out the way you came um, so that you're not increasing congestion on the main street um, or making that, that exit way there um, a, a hazard. But uh, certainly for me, those sorts of things will be what make the town centre more attractive to people and will limit the safety and hazards that I see in some of the, the proposals so far. Um, you know, I think we're, we're lucky to have very wide streets and I think we accommodate cyclists. Um, yes, there's always going to be a hazard when we've got motor vehicles moving at higher speeds um, around um, New Township. Um, yes, I think we need to encourage people to drive slower and take more care, um, but I don't think creating obstacles is necessarily the right um, way of going about um, those things. And I think the, the comments that were made um, about the intersection um, in Fitzherbert Street, where um, maybe here, um, Leverson has his site, were all great points. Um, at the moment, you know, the, the main street can take heavy traffic. Um, but yes, we have been parking. I think our businesses need and want the parking capacity in close proximity. And I have observed the trucks. Um, parking and using a um, skate park, um, tables and things for um, having their lunch and conversing with one another's um, truck drivers, sort of meeting and, and things. What I am concerned about is that if you close the um, Fox Street crossing, you're taking away a main arterial for vehicles that currently feeds a quarter of the township um, and enables them to travel um, in a merging manner um, going north to Greytown. And to me, what that's forcing people to do is to go to Wakefield Street and go out at Wakefield Street. I know already that in recent months, the ability to get out of Wakefield Street has um, reduced considerably, it's taking a lot more time um, because the traffic you know, is increasing um, on the main street. And I think closing that crossing will, will impact even further on that and you'll get a backup of the traffic at, at Wakefield Street um, as a result of the Fox Street closure. We will get more people from that sector of town going Bell Street or one of the alternate routes and coming out um, slightly further um, down the other end of town. So I'm concerned that we don't really have a, well, I certainly haven't been able to um, get hold of statistics that show the, the impact of that traffic flow on the alternative closures and the, and the proposals being put forward. Um, I think we need to think very carefully about um, how we can do that in the best way and still maintain those nice wide arterial um, access ways. Anyway. Thank you very much. We've got time for maybe one or two questions, if you've got them. Um, so just to uh, quickly let you know that um, we met with Kiwi Rail last week and we certainly uh, raised our concerns and those of the community around the, um, particularly the median 
strip that they've put in and the access to the car park. Um, so that has been well raised um, from this table um, and the need for uh, Kiwi Rail led consultation um, on the closure or proposed closure of crossings was um, was well raised with them as well. So I have a question about space. You know, people involved in the project have come and talked to people at the fire station and things like that, and a member of the fire brigade. And um, it's, um, you know, it's certain to me there's a lot of our crew um, live in that Fox Street area. So, um, will be impacted negatively. Absolutely. Thank you. No, thank you very, very much. Yeah. Yeah. Matthew, are you? Yeah, that's yes, lovely. If you'd like to come and join us, so it is Matthew's submission is submission number twenty-seven or the one in the pack. Good morning, Matthew. Um, so just for your benefit, um, we have ten minutes to speak to your submission. You can take your submission as it was. Um, written as read, but so feel free to add and and diversify in, in what you've um, brought to us already. If you speak for maybe five to six minutes, that allows some time for questions, but feel free to take the entire thing you wish when you're ready. Thanks. Thanks very much for hearing me. Um, for a little bit of background, I'm a resident of Featherston, moved, uh, moved there about a year and a half ago uh, with my family. Um, from a work perspective, I'm a senior urban designer uh, based in Wellington at the moment. Um, I do have experience and have been in London working in large-scale integrated master planning projects throughout uh, Europe, Middle East and Africa. Um, so kind of this master planning is... Um, <laughs> it's it's a job. Um, <laughs> it's amazing who yeah, populates yeah. this, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it's a, it's, both from a professional standpoint and from uh, you know, being a resident of the family. And I love living in Bernstein, so we're really keen to get you know, the absolute best that we can out of, um, out of this process. Um, so in, in terms of what I wanted to speak about today, um, really the, the main point um, is around a, a potential kind of spatial disconnect that is being set up in the way that the master plan is drawn at the moment. Um, so the two kind of top priorities that are identified in the master plan is the idea of the, the town centre heart and the transformative pedestrian link to the railway station. Um, so both, both of those kind of concepts as key drivers for the master plan, I think, are, are really good. They're you know, the right kind of in the right spot, you know, what should be happening. Um, the trouble, I suppose, is that the way that it's currently drawn set, or potentially sets up a, a disconnect between those two uh, those two priorities. So the train station, we you know, is you know, it's associated with a future growth node under the regional growth strategy. In a way, it's kind of it's the primary driver for a lot of the intensification and growth uh, of the city going forward. So you know, that, that link is, is a really key aspect um, for it. Um, the, as the way that most plans are drawn, the link to the railway station comes out some kind of 240 metres away from the centre of the town centre heart that's, that's identified in the master plan. Um, and so there's two kind of potential issues there, one around uh, legibility of the environment and the other around concentration activity. Um, so... In the report by uh, Mr. Cullum, um, which was the sorry the um the economic review of the intensification options, which admittedly was done very early on in the process, 
um, one of the key challenges that he identified was about the uh, kind of the transformation triggers or the uh, reasons for um, new development to come in. And you know, often that is very much tied to activity in the in the um, spaces that they want to intensify, intensify around. So the idea of the town centre heart, I think, is a fantastic one. You know, bringing that kind of more integrated um, open space network into the centre of the town is going to be a great transformation trigger. Um, you know, high levels of amenity, concentrating, bringing people together into the space. Um, what I think needs to happen is a little bit more integration with the link out to the railway station. Because at the moment we've got a node of activity happening in the town centre part and a node of activity that's going to happen around the entrance um, of the of the walkway. So there's going to be two potential outcomes there. Either it creates a disconnect where you've got uh, development that starts happening around those two different nodes, or in the worst case scenario, it means a dilution of activity to a point where it doesn't reach that um, transformation trigger, and so you end up, you know, severely slowing um, the development that could happen in that area. Um, so, so, so that's that's one kind of aspect to it. The second being um, the idea around legibility of your environment. So when you're in around the space, moving around, uh, you know, being able to tell about, you know, having signage or knowledge of the area where different routes are. So at the moment, with the town centre heart, I think being probably the stronger of the um, kind of spatial nodes there, one of the challenges will be that the proposed Birdwood, uh, Birdwood Street upgrade with the uh, shared space, which again, I think is a fantastic idea and very much in support of it. The challenge there being that that could read as the kind of higher order street, you know, that legibly to somebody who doesn't know the area would feel like that's your primary route going northwards out towards the railway station. At the moment, that kind of terminates at the end of the open space, which you know, to a certain degree is a, is a little bit of a kind of weak termination point. And yeah, it kind of leads out towards, um, you know, to a largely residential uh, environment. So one of the things that I could say in terms of how that could be addressed is by continuing that treatment through to Bell Street, um, you know, creating what is essentially a, a termination with the Anzac Hall and school there, um, having a, a slightly um, upgraded or, or changed uh, streetscape along Bell, which can then uh, pull to pedestrians back around towards um, towards the primary road that's been that's been set up along the train line. Um, as a kind of a secondary point um, around the currently proposed Fox Street uh, closure for um, for vehicles. Um, I suppose this is more of a question than a statement, which is around the master plan identifies Hickson and Bell Street as the so as the alternate route for vehicles to take. And has, has that been based on a traffic impact assessment that was done as part of the project? Um, while I'm not a transport planner, um, in my experience, the you know, driver behaviour as a, a result of road closures very rarely actually follows the kind of, you know, what a, what a planner or a designer would consider to be the logical, uh, most direct route. So I think being able to have an understanding based on, you know, a formalised traffic impact assessment would be uh, something that would be really beneficial. Um, as an example, in order to take that Hicks and Bill Street route, um, if you're coming from Martyr, for example, you would have to go directly across State Highway 2 um, you know, at a right angle. The reason why Fox Street is used by most people going to the train station at the moment is because you're able to enter at an oblique angle rather than having to go um, across both lanes of, um, of the state highway at once. So uh, I think that would just never be very beneficial going forward. Um, so that, that was all I wanted to 
have it today. Is there's any I, can I just comment because it's the, the, the closure of many crossings have effectively come about by a request from Kiwi, Kiwi Rail. Yes. It's, it's their corridor. <clears throat> Obviously, they're managing it to the best of their ability with all the, uh, I guess, analysis uh, that you referred to uh, having been completed. We haven't even seen the detail on that, so. Okay. Yes, I think from, from experience of working in certain yeah. similar projects, we did the uh, we did the spatial plan for Patoni and for Hart City, the firm that I worked with in Wellington. Um, a lot of well, in those projects, we uh, encourage council to undertake some of that analysis themselves to be able to basically come to, it was Waka Katahi in that situation, but to be able to come to Waka Katahi in a stronger mm. kind of negotiating standpoint rather Good than advice. their analysis. Yeah, I agree. No. So I'm going to see any further questions for Matthew this morning. Councillor Maynard. Hi. Um, just to thank you very much as well uh, for coming and speaking. Well, we've been quite lucky. I think we've got some amazing speakers here um, coming to put, put across their views and, and very knowledgeable. So really appreciate hearing hearing from you and I, I guess um, um one of the things I'm, I'm and correct please correct me if I'm wrong but um uh, just going back to uh, Leslie's point um where so for, for you you could probably see with the with those two connections with the train probably Bell Street would be, make more sense so that way it keeps that connectivity between the two nodes Yes. Of the closure of the of the railway line, and is, is that kind of what I'm hearing to, to keep that flow going? Uh, yes, I think I mean coming coming from yeah, I, I think it, either way it would be good to you know have that you know more robust uh, analysis. But from from my kind of perspective, not being a transport planner, I think uh, having Bell Street closed off would. Yeah, would make a bit more sense in terms of the impact that it's going to have on the vehicle movement around um, around the town. One last question from Councillor okay. Palmer. Thank you. Thanks. Um, uh, yeah. You know, I'm not a planner, so interpreting what what you and Russell talk about sometimes is quite difficult. You know, you speak in a very common language. Um, so when when you when you made the comment, I just wrote it down here. You right. talked about um, you know I'm a little bit simple, so you've got to actually make it very clear for me. Um, when you talk about um, the town centre to the to the train station further integration, what do you actually mean? So I think what what I mean there is. Um, well, then there's a, a couple of different ways that that could be that that could be done. The first one, I suppose, is the the treatment of the the street, the State Highway Two piece of street between those between those two nodes. Um, at the moment, the proposed plan of the proposed zoning has uh, a little hole in the mixed use mm -hmm. zone. You know, if you were coming from the train station towards the city. You come out towards a little triangle. I think it's ten and twelve. Um, uh, come out on um, Johnson Street. Johnson Street. Yeah. So it's, it's just two properties that are kind of wedged between the yeah. rail line. Um, you know, from a legibility perspective, that those were able to be redeveloped at some point in the future. It's probably 20, 30 years before there would be any kind of movement on those um, to something a bit more mysterious with a commercial. Uh, you know, use that ground that's you know it's going to signal that you're in that city seems to be a lot stronger than you know terminating your view on a um you know on a residential so there's a, a little bit of that the sexual connection between the two of them um and then the other thing i think is that if we were able to increase the shared space that's uh proposed along birdwood street and create a stronger link um at Bell between the Anzac Hall and the main pedestrian route, I think that would go a long way towards you know, creating a tighter connection rather than you know, essentially forcing people to go further off their desire line, um, you know, out towards um, the rail line itself. Oh, thanks, Carl. Oh, thank you. So there's, no, there's no connection if you're on the Birdwood side to the train station, is there? No, there's no pedestrian crossing there, is there? No. Okay. If you're on the Anzac Hall side of the train station, you, you actually have to go across Bell Street. Or from Bell, you'd have to turn onto Bell. Right. Yeah, so yeah. There's, there's no there's no pedestrian crossing there or anything. There is a pedestrian yeah. crossing between the um, 
that choice the that is it. on the intake hall yeah. for yeah. pedestrian crossing. Yeah. yeah. Across the railway line. But there's yeah. also one from the not playground a... over to Card Reserve. Oh, I'm, what I'm thinking, uh, what I'm sort of trying to understand is if you, if you live in um, south of Birdwood Street, the, the housing there, if you wanted to walk to the train station, can you walk up? You go up. Harrison so Street, is Harrison there Street doesn't cross over, but Bell Street crosses over, yeah, and so currently yeah. Fox Street crosses over, so you can just walk over these. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's no way to walk. So Harrison yeah, Street is a split street. Lovely. Thank you very much. And again, um, as Councillor Maynard said, having your professional opinion yeah. and, yeah. and carving yeah. your eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did suggest we lock the door, but yeah. apparently that's not the done thing. Thank yeah. you very much. There's another point of point. If there's any further questions or, you know, I'm happy to recontact by email. Leave your card, please. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, then we've got um, Bain Kieran Jets. So we have um, Ross and Aaron. We do. Yes. So they're in that card. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ross and Aaron. Yeah. So you just want to enjoy it. So they're not coming. And uh, they're not here at the moment. So we'll just it's go. a time block so they can. Yeah. 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 So it's just a time block. So we, um, we're we moving to Ross and Erin Gange. They are submission number 33 or submission eight in the order of today's proceedings. Just drawing a little bit of the thing. The there, one just, the back. It's very hard to see. <laughs> I don't know if you're struggling. Nikki, are you able to close the back yeah, of yeah. 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 when we look at um, the adoption of the plans? So, submission number 33, Ross and Erin. Thanks. Aaron. Yeah. So, they are. Uh, they, uh, yeah, yeah. Erin? Yeah. 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 Submission 33. Oh, that's just in the hotel. Page 176. Yes, so um, just for your, so, sorry, just while we get ourselves organised, you'll see the, um, that Ross and Erin's submission is 176 in this pack, but actually they are in the appendice um, in the paper pack yeah. right at the back. As I was saying before, the submissions have been read, but it just helps us if we can yeah. familiarise ourselves with, with the content. You don't have to speak directly to your submission, um, but it just helps us if we have the general gist of what you've submitted. Um, so you have 10 minutes. Um, if you can um, speak for maybe seven or eight that allows us some time to ask questions at the end. But if you would like to use your entire time speaking to us, that's also entirely. We're quite happy to take questions. Um, but we can just give a brief summary. So if you, you speak to your submission and, um, and we'll go from there. Everyone ready? Um, so thank you. Um, we put in our submission, um, but it wasn't necessarily that easy to fit in specific questions are so the, that's why we have the, our written presentation that was emailed and all the uh, uh, attachments which were the, um, the reports um, but essentially what we're saying um, in terms of answering your first question I think each other is not choosing that to be missed is that yes we are saying that we think that the sort of master plan has taken too narrow a view on land that is suitable for housing development for Featherston because the whole um, uh, the whole notion of um, uh, wanting to be five or ten minutes walking from the train station is something we support, but we're saying in addition to that, there are other interest groups in the community that have needs that we don't think have been adequately addressed by the Featherstone Master Plan, so we are representing those needs today. And one of those is to meet the needs of families because um, we are expecting a, a, a quite an influx of uh, um, people over the next 30 years. They all went to the house, and those people are all going to be um, commuters. And the people who currently haven't found and not in the community at all, um, we're going to have families, we're going to be welcoming families, and with families we're going to have children, we're going to have um, um, you know, young people that need education. And we're saying, well, where is the planning 
that's going to welcome all these families to Featherston and be able to house them in a way that's meaningful and be able to get them to where they need to be, like schools and, and places of education. Um, and that a lot of that doesn't involve the train station, but we still need to have good connections to those amenities and those places that are going to meet the needs of families. <clears throat> so we've identified um, land that we have to the south of the town, which is really already very well connected. We're on the boundary of a countless, we've lost count of how many residential neighbours we have. Um, and that land, we think, is ideal for a community. I have, um, well, it was in, if you want to, if anyone wants to have a look at a visual of what it could look like, it's only one option. But when we talk about the scale of what we have to offer, it's actually really quite significant and it could make a big difference on that distance. And it doesn't need to look like that, but that is an option of what something could look like. And when we talk about 10 to 12 hectares of land being made available, it's hard for people to imagine what that could do for town, but it could actually uh, look something like this, which is, you know, a new community. And when we're talking about new Erin, community... can you just tell us how, how many potential sections oh, you have in there? I think there was 105 on this um, map. And when you're talking about new housing, you're talking about housing that is built to code, that is warm, that it is dry and is built for purpose, um, which a lot of our old places um, currently, they're, they're not really that good for that sort of thing. And we don't think that um, increasing density uh, is going to be enough to welcome new families and the numbers that we're talking about. So we think you mm -hmm. need to look at some greenfield areas um, and secondly, which was probably extremely important for everybody, particularly in this room right now, is that we are um, ageing as a population. And over time, we're going to have a lot more people that need retirement living and then are going to need adequate housing that are going to meet the needs of older people. And those needs are very specific and they're not currently met in Featherston. Um, and any research that you pick out that talks about the needs for older people, it's to try and encourage them to live in the community as long as possible. But to do that, we need to put people in or provide options for an environment where people feel safe when they're older, where they feel that um, they've got social connections and people are gravitating towards retirement villages or light developments because <laughs> they have those social connections. And when people are older, um, it's a lot about living with like people because you've got that time. And when you come together and you have activities and you do stuff, that really prolongs the life, the quality of life for people. And I'm really um, disappointed where that there isn't, we think, um, enough planning put into what aged living could look like for Featherston, um, and I think it would be, we think it would be quite cruel, actually, to say to an older person, oh, you're going to have to go to Marston now, or you're going to have to go to Carpety, because there isn't suitable housing in Featherston for you, because you don't want a big home anymore, you probably want something small, you want to be around other people where you feel secure and that you can have social connections with to increase your quality of life. Um, but that's not available. And, oh, you might also need assisted living, and we definitely don't have that. So the land that we have identified um, that is at the end of White Street, Wallace Street, Lion Street, Bethune Street, that area is scale, is scale that could meet those needs that are not provided for, that we don't think are provided for in the Master Plan as it's stitched right now. We think when you only look at um, the careers, you are then prioritising the needs of that group above the needs of other interest groups in the community. And when we're planning for 30 years ahead, my question is, is that equitable? Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. uh, we're open to questions. Thank you very much. So I, I guess what you are challenging us to think about is to think about uh, 
allowing for some urban spread rather than just intensification within yes. our already we, existing urban spread. And the reason why we think our land is suitable for that is because it is already well connected to town, so it meets all those ideological um, missions um, that are already set out in the plan for being connected to, you know, walking. Um, the school is a five-minute walk from our land. Uh, town is five, between five to ten minutes. They're on the same side of the railway crossing, so there's no there's no issue with um, congestion to cross railway lines to get to school or get to the main street. And then when you're in the main street, you've got pedestrian crossing to get across the railway line. So it's it's sitting there um, as being um, a good option. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Councillor Olds. Karen, thanks very much. Uh, nice to see you, Ross. <laughs> um, just a, a quick question in terms of um, uh, the development of this particular block of land. Is this something that you would actually do yourselves or would you, would you once it was obviously rezoned uh, to facilitate what you're suggesting, is this something that you would invest in and to develop yourselves? We would prefer the rezoning option to actually go out to um, aged care providers and see what you know they could bring to town. And a, and a we don't feel that we're qualified to do that, but we could potentially do something um, that's uh, at, at, a, at a lower level than that. You know, where it might just be an enclave of um, small residential um, type units and um, yep. sort of like a secure setting. That's the, so those possibilities are there. Yeah. So you you make efforts to try and make it happen. I guess that's what I'm yes, asking. Yeah, yeah. Because the thing is, um, if it's not, then another option for us is because we've got a resource consent for four, uh, three, four hectare lots. Yes. So that could go to individual ownership. Yeah. Not saying it will, but it could. Somebody could build a house, have a pony, that kind of thing, and then the opportunity would be lost. So yeah. at the moment, we we are in control of. Yep. The opportunities for scale there. Excellent. Thank you. Councillor Maynard, thank you so much for coming. Um, I just note you, you've actually, one of the things that you, you've put here as well, you, you, you also have access to, you know, the the, the lines as well um, in, this, in this area. Is that right? So you've, oh, you've actually got the, yeah, yes. you've already got the line through, yes. through the property. And and so and and is that also it's through adjacent land which we also own, uh -huh. um, but it comes down Wade Street, which is the Wade Street. Yeah, so it comes down here. Oh yeah, so it comes down yeah. this side. Um, so it's not. Yes, and this land here had been identified by the engineers as being suitable for wastewater attenuation. Which is a concept that we can't speak to because we're not you know, professionals in that department, but we understand that it is um, suitable for mitigating um, waste builder uh, over capacity or something like that. Yeah. Okay, right. That was it. then Councillor Bosley. And maybe Councillor Bosley was next. No, you go. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering so, in terms of looking at talking to HQ providers, so you could be looking at um, pensioner housing as well? I think anything. Like anything. Like, we open to any kind yes, of. Definitely. Like we come here um, to look to provide a solution. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you so, really what you're suggesting is being open and, and shelling it, challenging council to look at rezoning, which would then open up the possibility for yeah. that style of. But you've got, it looks like you're looking at the emphasis for family, um, and more housing, or perhaps more elderly, it, with the people more sort of sustained in that area rather than commuting to Wellington, that are more. Yeah, is that you're looking at? Is that if the emphasis you're kind of looking at the areas that you think have been missed out on, which is the families yes. and just the older people who are because families, um, your children yeah. of that age, stay in town. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there might be um, parents that are in town too, or they're yeah. working elsewhere in Wairarapa or yeah. got businesses and things like that. And actually, yes, and actually, the, the walking to the railway station. It would only be 20 minutes and anyway, oh, yes. that's, that's yes. not yes. out of bounds. Yeah. No, yeah, no. Yeah. Thank you. That was really nice.
Um, so I'd like to be asked by other councils, but it comes back, I think, so your, your zoning currently is rural, and you're looking for rezoning, but you're going to flood plain, is that correct? That's not uh, no. There's a mention of flooding. No. And, uh, it's been, um, um, uh, the engineers have really been over it and done all the testing, and it's all, it's never, ever been flooded, never. Mm -hmm. It's, um, it's, so have you applied for rezoning beforehand, or is this the, just the first thing we kind of thought of? No, we have thought about it. Yeah. We spoke to, um, through our um, town planner, um, and where James was on yeah. working with council, um, and that we were asked to not do anything until you work through the business and master plan right, okay. stage of things. Yeah. So we have not formally made an application. Lovely. Thank you very much, Ross and Erin. Yeah. Oh, one very quick last question from Councillor Plummer. Correct. Um, class of soils, I see it's class three, is that right? I think it might be two. It's sort of a one to well, class two and three. But um, but my question is, um, have you, you know, you can obviously do a private plan change on this if you wanted to under the district plan, you could you could actually do a rezoning or a private plan change. So just playing devil's advocate here, if, if the Committee said no, we're not going to rezone that. Would you consider doing a private plan change in the future to do that anyway? We would rather um, work with the communities to provide what you want. That's our preference. Okay. So it's, but, uh, it's not a no. But we could do that later. Yeah. But we would be prevented for two years. Yeah. Because yeah. um, after a plan change, you can't do anything for two years. It's a role. Sure. That is a role. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so thanks so much for all the information as well that you've got. Yeah, yeah. It's obviously been in my mind. It's really the fact that you've got that confidence. Okay, so like, 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 Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Right. Jennifer Grant's just arrived. She's just Yeah. That's great. Thank you so much. And that's, we're not at the end. Yeah. Um, the other two was, I just want to. Sorry, we're just going to, um, we're running about 10 minutes ahead of time. So we're just going to take a 10 minute adjournment for the stretching of legs and cups of tea. And we will be back just before 10 30, please. Okay.
Right, thank you everyone. I hope you had a good break and we will kick back off. We are um, heading into submission number 56. Um, so we're moving to John Gray, who is joining us online. Can you hear us this morning, John? Uh, yes, I can. Yep. Okay. We can. Ah, we can see you and hear you as well. Um, so for your benefit this morning, John, you have 10 minutes to present to the committee. Um, if you use slightly less than your 10 minutes, that allows time for councillors to ask any clarifying questions. But you are, of course, welcome to speak for the full 10 minutes if you choose. When you're ready, uh, kick off. Okay, great. Uh, well, th thank you for the opportunity to, to give an oral submission um, at this Featherston Master Plan uh, hearing. Uh, I've lived in Featherston or well, in the Featherston area um, for 13 years and own a commercial property uh, in the town. It was actually about 10 years ago when I saw a, a rather dilapidated building and decided to do my part to improve the look of the town. Um, so I bought the building, repainted the exterior, renovated the interior to make it a fit space for a, a retail business. Um, of course, I found that buying a commercial property comes with surprises and mine was needed to do, um, to, well, to put some serious money into earthquake strengthening a, a one-story timber frame building. Um, now you have my written written submissions. I don't plan to address all the points made in my submission, but rather just focus on three um, three main points. Um, and that's parking, which you've heard a bit about already, uh, the squirrel and the historic uh, precinct. So s starting off with um, um, parking, if I may, um, my written submission starts by emphasizing Featherston's status as a gateway to the Wairarapa and um, convenient parking is uh, key to realizing this this gateway role as a place to sort of easily stop, um, refresh and relax. Uh, now it appears to, to me that the proposed uh, upgrades in the plan will remove most of the current convenient parking uh, outside retail shops. I feel that adequate Main Street parking is directly correlated to economic development. It, each and every uh, uh, Main Street parking space brings money to Featherston. Take away that parking and you take money out of the town. Now, my experience is that many customers of Featherston's retail businesses come into uh, the Featherston shops uh, for maybe five 10 minutes, uh, spend some money, and then they're out again to continue their journey. Um, however, once they are parked, um, they can decide to do a bit of exploring in the town. In my submission, casual passers-by simply um, will not stop if they have to hunt for um, parking off the main street. And we see this in other towns. Carterton is lined with main street parking. Greytown is lined with main street parking. Um, in my submission, there's really only one way to make Featherston more of a, uh, a shopping ghost town, and that would be the idea in some of the submissions um, to have a traffic bypass. So that's parking. Um, on the Squirrel, I, I just didn't see very much in the plan about the Squirrel. Uh, this is something that was touted as a great asset to the town but in my view has ended up being the very um, definition of a white elephant. Whenever I pass the squirrel, I, I simply do not see people enjoying it on a casual basis. Uh, when it was sold to the town, um, we were told it was going to have pop-up container shops. It was expected to be bounded on one side by a retail development. Um, none of this has happened. So as part of the master plan, I really ask council to take a serious look at the restrictions um, on its use and how it can be, um, you know, much more utilised as a real asset um, to the town. Uh, finally, on the historic uh, precinct, 
Uh, so my submission is, is to question the utility of earmarking neighbourhoods as new historic um, precincts. And I'm really recommending that there be a review of the current uh, historic precinct around the War Memorial, uh, which in my view doesn't seem fit for purpose. My building is within the current historic precinct. Uh, close by is a, another building in the precinct that is slowly decaying, uh, very unloved and unused. So I fail to see the point of having an historic precinct if owners of historic buildings are simply allowed to leave them to rot without a positive obligation on building owners to maintain their historic buildings. There's nothing to stop this behavior. So I feel there should be disincentives to letting buildings crumble and incentives to fix up and restore heritage buildings. Um, I am sorry to say that that the building I purchased is starting to look a little run down again. And with the massive increase in rates, insurance and building costs, I'm beginning to see why um, we see a lot of building decay in Featherston. If someone has taken on the burden of owning an historic building for the benefit of the entire community, and in my submission, they should receive some help um, whether it be a waiver of consent fees, abatement of rates, or whatever the council can come up with to really ensure that these historic precincts fulfill their role of preserving and maintaining uh, historic buildings. Uh, to close, close my uh, oral submission, what does Featherston need? In my view, it needs investment and plenty of it, private investment and a massive amount of public investment um, if the projections of population growth are correct. Most of that public uh, investment will need to be in infrastructure so that the basic conditions are there for the town to thrive and to grow. Uh, we need a plan that will stimulate investment, not deter it. And in my view, the current plan does deter uh, investment by removing convenience parking on the main street. Um, I think we really need a, a council that has a reputation for being um, business friendly if Featherston and, and the other towns are going to be able to thrive. I think we also need to, to get NZTA and, and Kiwi Rail on board and not have them place obstacles to the flow of the town. And I would ask council to really fight for the town when NZTA and Kiwi Rail are proposing uh, these obstacles. Um, thank you for your time. Um, I'd be happy to, to respond to questions. Wonderful. Thank you, John, for a very clear oral submission. Uh, councillors, any questions or comments for John at this point? Councillor Olds. Um, yeah, no, thanks very much for your submission, John. I was, just, um, I was curious about this work, although and you made some comment about um, it was held up to be something quite spectacular for the town and would do uh, wonderful things. Um, and you're absolutely right. There was to be some uh, uh, development alongside the squircle to sort of complement it and, and also uh, shelter it from those uh, northwesterlies that rush through there occasionally. I just, I'm just curious to know what you have in mind <laughs> of, um, better utilisation of the squircle. I mean, have you got something that we haven't tried or is there something that the community haven't tried that <laughs> you, you may suggest? Uh, well, what, one suggestion I made in my written submission is that is to have some kind of um, shelter, uh, you know, from the wind, whether that's plantings or whatever it is, um, because occasionally it has been used for um, stalls and that sort of thing, but it hasn't really been practical because of the, you know, when, when you have days of strong wind. So some sort of shelter on the side where the wind, um, prevailing wind comes, I think would be helpful. Um, and my understanding is that there are, <laughs> you know, you kind of need permission or permits to to actually um, have events and that sort of sort of thing um, involving the squircle. So I, I think maybe looking at those restrictions and and, and seeing if they could be um, lightened or um, you know so that it could be made more available for community uh, community uses would be be some of my thoughts. Right. Thanks very much. Wonderful. Thank you, John.
Well, thank you very much for your time and for uh, for joining us this morning and for uh, submitting on this topic as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Cool. Right. Our next submitter is in the room with us. It is Jennifer Gray. And Jennifer's submission is submission number 57. Come and take a seat just um just at the end of the table. Thanks, Jennifer. When you're ready, Jennifer, you have 10 minutes to present this morning, and if you have a little less speaking time, it gives us time to ask questions. Why I have something to say and why I hope you will listen. I have lived in South Featherston for 13 and a half years. I have raised and am raising a family here. I have been a Featherston business owner for over 10 years. I have very experience in the community, having been involved in very um, various ways, such as setting up and running a local business group, creating a central website for Featherston, initiating the tradition of community makariki celebrations in Featherston, researching photo collections, and making written and oral presentations to the council and community board. <coughs> now, the important part. There are lots of things in my written submission, but today I'll be focusing on our main street. Featherston is the southern gateway to the wider Upper. We have an awesome town with people with a lot of heart, but we don't have a commercial heart, a cohesive commercial space. For our community to thrive, we need to have thriving business, uh, businesses that draw local people and visitors and provide stability and employment opportunities. Although we have some awesome local businesses with determined business owners, there are a number of challenges for the growth and success of business in Fitz. Number one is the disjointed nature of our main street, caused by the abundance of road and rail intersections, empty open spaces and unused or unusable buildings which create dead zones. And that's what the first map is showing. That I've highlighted where there are businesses that are currently functioning and you'll be able to see how disjointed they are. Number two is a lack of fit for purpose and affordable commercial space. Number three is problems with flooding, high winds and regular power outages. Number four, the volume, speed and nature of the traffic coming through our town. Number five is, dare I say it, council. This is through decisions that are made that have so far had an ongoing negative impact on our main street commercial zone. I'm able to provide several examples, but unfortunately don't have time to list them now. I am grateful for the creation of a plan for Fedston. From all of my experience, I urge the focus on the main street to be on creating connection, providing and maintaining easy access to parking, and enabling an increase in fit for purpose commercial buildings. Some recommendations are, based on my experience, a small roundabout at the intersection of State Highway 2, Raven Street, Wakefield Street, Bethune Street, to the top end. Um, this would assist in slowing traffic while also making that intersection safer and easier to navigate. There's also a possibility of a roundabout at State Highway 2 boundary road intersection, which would um, provide the same benefits. Two, the supply and installation of container shops at the Scribble Boardwalk, at minimum on the west side. This could be funded by the money from the sale of the oh, sorry, um, lovingly known as gravel pit land, which was to be earmarked for a project, that money from that sale was to be earmarked for a project to benefit Featherston. These container shops would provide some shelter from the wind for the squircle and make it more used and usable, <coughs> provide quick and easy retail space, 
assist in bridging the gap, providing a connection between retail to the west and east of the Squirkle. Leasing out the container shops would provide ongoing income to the council to supplement rates income. Three, we could close the small piece of road next to the skate park between Fitzherbert Street and Fox Street and make it, and perhaps part of the adjacent tri unused triangle of land, available for some sort of building development. Ideas for small businesses ideal for this location are a food or drink vendor and or bicycle scooter for hire and repair. Thank you. Closing this small piece of road would make the intersection of Fox Street and Birdwood Street safer for people using the skate park playground and toilet facilities, as well as for vehicles. Provide additional commercial space and again, assist in bridging the gap, providing a connection between retail to the west and east of the Squirrel. Number four, go ahead with the planned shared space on Fox Street by the War Memorial and include an easy means of closing and opening up the vehicle access so that vehicles can be completely blocked when used for events to increase safety. Five, go ahead with the planned mixed use zonage for the main street retail zone from Wakefield to Hickson Streets, with a requirement for commercial space on the ground floor road frontage and off-street parking for any residential use included in the property. Six, reviewing and where needed, revising or removing reserve and heritage zoning restrictions in the Main Street retail zone, again, Wakefield to Hickson Street, which impede or overcomplicate development Seven, go ahead with planned additional pedestrian crossings, especially near Adamson Service Station and near the War Memorial to help safely connect both sides of State Highway 2. And eight, find ways for council to facilitate and encourage business and business property development by things such as a subcommittee, rates, incentives or penalties, and developing a culture of interpreting bylaws in a way that enables within the necessary guidelines. Instead of, no, you can't do that, an attitude of how can we help make this possible? A couple of additional comments, parking. Although the volume, speed and nature of traffic coming through our main street poses a challenge, as a business owner, I know how reliant many businesses are on drivers passing through and choosing to stop in our town. Many only do so when they see easily accessible parking, especially whatever has been As such, anything that reduces access accessibility and parking will be disastrous for those businesses. When planning parking in Featherston, it is also important that large vehicles such as trucks, camper vans, and cars with trailers or caravans are catered for, as their drivers are an important percentage of potential customers. Trees. I suggest that though the idea of trees along our main street is lovely, there are several things that could make them inadvisable. Will the planting of the trees reduce parking or make parking more difficult to access? Will the trees reduce visibility and therefore safety? Will the tree roots create problems with footpaths, drains, etc.? How much maintenance will the trees require and how much will the cost impact rates? How much debris will the trees cause to be blown down our main street on windy days and what will the impact of this debris be? Having a shop on, having had a shop on both sides of the main street, I can um, definitely say that debris from na nature and other rubbish is a problem. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you, Jennifer. That was a, a really great submission and um, and provides some real clear uh, points for thought um, and, and, yes, direction for, for thought. So thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Z, Councillor Olds. Yeah, I, I endorse that. Thank you, um, your worship so, yeah um jennifer just a, a query about the pop-up shops and the container shops i guess on the square because that's that's one area that's really high profile and um, does need some utilization where, where would you propose putting those i mean the the of the boardwalk as far as i understand that's what the boardwalk was created for that's those foot oh i see yeah 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 nowhere. 
Yep. yep. Um, they're both at the moment. That's what they are. They're so saying build in that pergola, that pic, was it pergola, pergola. Got a roof above them. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So on the west side yep. of that footpath facing into the square pool. Yep. You could have the container shops. We put some flats there a while ago uh, that yeah. obviously take yeah. the wind, but they're not. They're not. Yeah, but it would also create retail space in a really easy, That's fast, right. would fast way. Yeah. And I, I know um, in the past I've raised this idea and it was said that, oh, well, let's wait and see what's going to happen with the development of the land next to it because putting those shops there could interfere with their plans, but their plans are not happening. Exactly. And we... So we need to move on. Williston can't keep waiting. No. Totally agree. I agree. Yeah. No, thanks for that. Appreciate it. Council, I'm sorry. Council. So, carry on for that, but I've got a separate question. Um, do you think that's council's responsibility to do that or council to stay out of it and allow business to do it? Well, as I suggested, council could use the money from the sale of the land to actually fund those containers and then could lease them out and that could be a source of income for council. We do that, though. We don't own them. Well, there is we'll money. That. There is money taken for the from, from the site. You know. I haven't seen or heard of anything that's been done with that money, so I'm assuming that it's still there. It's, 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 um, it sits under the recommendation of the Featherston Community yeah. Board. Mm. I'm just not, I'm not sure whether it's, whether it's the council's responsibility to get involved in business um, that mm. far into business development. I think it's our responsibility to enable. Enable not to do. Yeah. Um, I think it's. Be doing the business, the businesses we <laughs> lease the spaces and themselves, but you could be providing it as part of the critical that we were. Mm. Yeah, totally agree. Um, my real question though is um, roundabouts. And um, I'm pretty sure, Tim, could you correct me um, when, under the last train and when Waka Kotahi was. Consulting on State Highway 2, we put a submission in for a roundabout in Greytown and Featherston on Wakefield Street, didn't we? I'm reasonably sure we It did come up as part of the Featherston Seat the Forum. I thought, we, I thought we, we did put in a submission for, we certainly put in for one roundabout for some Greytown, yeah. and I'm pretty sure there was one that we recommended for Wakefield Street. There was some conversations, but, but Waka Kotahi turned us down on all three. Yes. So we have we have tried that, um, and we're certainly keen to try it again because I think it makes a huge sense. It's of what a five yes. five street intersection. It appears to be accident victims of victims, so that they'll listen to us. I don't know, but that is a really hairy intersection. That one. Um, it's it would unclear and it's yeah. it's just luck that is yeah. Maybe that's something that's we can re um, yes. relook at with Waka Kotahi Russell, maybe put that into the to the mix. Yeah. And as uh Jennifer said, look at the boundary road end as well. So I think you're right, the one at either end would mm. quite likely provide <laughs> safety and slower and better visibility at both. Mm -hmm. Coming out of Boundary Road is not very good because it's on a bend. Yeah. And the um the contour of the road right. is like that as well. So you're actually going up and yeah. around. Uh thank you very, very much. Thanks, Jennifer. Um, it's lovely to see you this morning, Jennifer. Oh. we're moving on to submission Romain, would you like to come and join us? And we are moving on to submission number 75. We are quite well ahead of time. Um, I wish we were having early lunch. Right? <laughs> Good, morning. Good morning, Romain. So you've been here long enough. You've seen that it's 10 minutes. And I'm fine. And you're... Um, I'll be very quick because I wasn't anticipating coming today. I realise I ticked the wrong box. <laughs> <on the front laughs> 
doesn't take a copy of the solution from anyone. Um, however, there's two or three things that I do want to um, talk about. When John presented his um, case for parking, that's the great thing that I find and scares me slightly if I was a business owner, mm -hmm. um, but also not as a business owner, just as a normal uh, person mm -hmm. going down to, to utilise the local businesses we have in Pedestal. Any loss of car park is going to be detrimental to all parties. Um, I notice in, in perhaps in Greytown where I go through occasionally that there is parking behind the um, front retail outlets. Um, it's a pity we can't do that to some extent here in Featherston. Um, if we get pedestrian crossings, I believe there may be one looking at it, the um, opposite the Royal or thereabouts. There is going to be an, um, an instant loss of car parks around those areas. Which, to my way of thinking, um, is, again, detrimental to the retailers that we have there. The other thing that I discovered, and it was after I'd made my submission, is that, and it was by a, a Facebook post from uh, Martin, that they're looking at uh, closing the uh, Brandon Street Rail Crossing. And immediately thought of buying meals on wheels route, and I go across that crossing quite easily because I have a gentleman who is right on the crossing, I would then have to come all the way back to the main street, Fitz uh, Revens, in that case, go bound onto Fitzherbert, back down Bethune Street, and then deliver another two or three meals around there. And it made me think that there's a lot of people who come off the hill and go down near the Western Lake or whatever, and then go straight through Brandon Street to access the far end of Featherston, the east end of Featherston. So consequently, that again made me think that the necessity for some form of traffic control roundabout at the end of my street, Bethune, would be vitally important. Because at this stage, you can sit at the end of Bethune Street, you've got five directions you're looking at. People coming off the hill, people coming through from Wakefield Street, people coming through from heading uh, west along Fitzherbert, You've then got to consider the people coming off the hillside end of Revan Street. It is a stop sign, fortunately. But also then you've got to consider the people coming out, and some of them don't stop, out of the Martinborough Road, State Highway 58, is it? That's true. And some of those can be doing a fair tack along, even though it's supposed to be quarter. So you can sit there for quite some time, and if you've got a long, I've seen cars with trailers, I've seen, you know, caravans, and that's why I sit there for quite some time, which is unfortunate. If we have a pedestrian crossing at that, round that intersection, not only, well, it would force cars to um, slow down anyway, if someone's brave enough to actually step out, you can stand there from Tyson to get across that road, but you can. Um, the, as I say, the rail crossing was one that came to me after I'd heard this. I had, I'm not going to be around long enough, just seen the Florida <laughs> of these yeah. around. And um, the one thing that does, as I say, worry me is the, the car park because people in general do not want to walk even five metres without being stupid. I've seen it. You know, if I can't get a car back, then they just pull out and keep going. Um, and I think that's about all that I wanted to say. I think those, to me, are the most important things. Thank you, Romaine, and thank you for being a continued engaged community member. It's good <laughs> to see you. Um, Councillors, any questions for Romaine this morning? Yeah. Councillor Oz? <laughs> Just the, uh, the Brandon Street uh, crossing, uh, I must admit we did uh, ask Kiwi Rail what their rationale was behind that and obviously the number of um, crossings that they do have yeah. in their rail corridor is substantial compared to what they have in Wellington and unfortunately there was no negotiation uh, whatsoever around Brandon Street, however there was some negotiation around Fox and Bell yeah. Street. Yeah. Um, so we just, we have to adjust I guess, we don't want to be... Um, 
inhibiting, I guess, what we expect in terms of delivery of train services between Wellington yeah. and the Wairarapa. No, no, it's my yeah. I just think that by closing that, it's going to put an emphasis on the intersections along that. Yeah. We, we had some concerns about um, uh, if State Highway 2 was blocked <clears throat> through a, a, an accident on the Rimbutakis, yes. because often the traffic's banked up into the Fitzherbert Street, right into the commercial area of uh, yeah. Featherston. So getting getting access to Western Lake Road for emergency services is generally carried out down through Brandon Street and across that yeah. railway line yeah. and down there. But, um, yeah, so that's worst-case scenario. Obviously, they weren't looking at worst-case scenarios. So. Mm -hmm. If they, can I just ask, because I'm not unaware of this, if they do um, close the rail crossings in both Fox and Brandon, do they leave a pedestrian access? Yes. yes. So that what they're saying is it will be vehicle closure, yeah. but pedestrian uh, opening will I still remain. Talk to them from school to the kindergarten mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Yeah, we can figure Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, Romain. Do we do we have Andrew Wyatt with us? No, Vicky is not with us. Vicky, sorry, Vicky, <laughs> come and join us. Design map one and two uh, in front of you because I'm referring to all oh. screens. Do we have extra copies of the design map? Are they with in the report? They are in the report. I'm sorry, I just don't know where that they are. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, so online as well. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, and just for clarity, we are looking at submission number seven eight as well. When you're ready, Becky. As a cyclist, I made a written submission regarding this plan, and a number of my questions were presented under Joe Baldwin's name on my behalf while I was away. Accordingly, I'd like to dispute some of the answers given to my questions. I will point out that my bike frequently has a failure of the line, my main means of transport and it means I require a bit more road space. I asked that the Serpent Street is being narrowed, where a site was supposed to go. The answer to the question was, the road was not being narrowed, instead car park spaces are being utilised. The road must stay an appropriate width to manage all traffic, including wide loads, as it is a state highway. I refer you to Design Map 1. If this is the case, is the answer to the council came, how is the western entrance to Fitzherbert Street, which quite clear, clearly shows an hour of entrance, going to be safe for cyclists? The image also appears to show a solid mass in the centre of the road. It might be only a car park space each side, but with the car travelling in both directions and the median strip as shown on this map, there is no escape room for the cyclists. In fact, there are seven narrowed intersections or vehicle crossing points between Hickson and Wakefield Streets, all of which put cyclists at risk when a vehicle is crossing at the same time. If, as stated, the idea is to encourage cycling and pedestrian traffic, the opposite is being achieved. Has the designer thought this through? Design map one, again, Main Street. Have our elderly and less mobile persons been considered in the replacement of car parks with a solid strip on the south side of Fitzherbert Street extending from the supermarket car park, so over from the supermarket, outside there, extending to the corner of Dane Street. If people with mobility issues cannot park outside the business they wish to use, I'm thinking predominantly in Petri, so who has a number of older people, clients, but there is a bookshop and other businesses there, people won't patronise that business. By implementing the solid strip instead of car parking, you are contributing to the demise of relevant businesses. 
We want to encourage businesses to our town, not make their life hard. Design map two, that's the town heart. There is a long green island creating low parking outside another local business, i.e. town country takeaways. It's down by our war memorial. This is so unfair to someone who is endeavouring to make a living, at, but you're making parking less convenient. This is potentially driving customers onto another venue or even another town. This is what the planner had in mind. If you look at, if you have got that picture in front of you, you will see it's a solid block of concrete outside that shop. The answer I received when I submitted this was that the purpose of this is to visually narrow road and slow vehicle speeds. Point acknowledged. Does point acknowledged mean the council has taken the adjacent business owner into consideration and will not destroy parking outside his premises? Street parking for westbound vehicles on Futurba Street outside our wall memorial, that's on Futurba, not uh, Fox, has been removed. No parking. And parking on the eastbound side has been reduced. Again, no thought for adjacent businesses. By planting trees on Futurba Street outside our supermarket, design that not one, please. Parking for longer vehicles and caravans, etc., is being markedly re reduced. The drivers of those vehicles stop on this Herbert Street because of the convenient parking. By removing or reducing this, the drivers are not going to stop, and not stopping is a loss to our town. We want people to stop in our town. We shouldn't be planning to make that difficult and forcing them to drive on. Design that two, Town Heart. The entrance to Lyon Street from Conservative Street, this has actually been discussed previously, but I want to point it out. The map quite clearly shows that Lyon Street entrance has been narrowed to one vehicle width. I find this incredible given the amount of school traffic, tour buses and emergency vehicles which use the route. The school traffic especially on a daily basis. Likewise, the Fox Street, Birdwood Street intersection, so that's opposite Lion Street, again, design map two. By narrowing this intersection, including the placement of trees, cyclists are being put at risk. Additionally, our firefighters use Birdwood Street to cross to Lion Street for direct access to State Highway 53. A shared space in this part of Birdwood Street makes a joke of our emergency vehicles being able to quickly negotiate this space in times of need. Design map 2 shows trees planted on all four corners of the intersection of Birdwood, Lyon and Fitzgerald. Trees which will obscure sight lines for any vehicles trying to pull out of Birdwood onto Fitzgerald. I'm going to design map 1. I'm totally against the closure of Fox Street Rail Crossing, but I realise Council is already discussing this with Kiwi Rail, so I'll leave that on the table. When I, however, when I did pose the question in writing to council, I received the following answer. We have already had one conversation with the fire brigade where they agreed to the proposal. However, we are planning a further conversation with them due to the level of questions around us. I find that answer difficult to believe because I have had discussions with fiends and fireys who all indicate they are not in favour. But I'm talking about the area command or fiends. I'm all for making Featherston more attractive. I love this town. It's why I live here. And I want passers by to be encouraged to stop. However, I feel that many of the communication ideas in this plan are defeating the purpose. As an active cyclist, when you narrow a street down, you, as you are proposing on the turbot, despite describing it as visually narrowing roads, you expose me and others like me to a high risk of car versus cyclists. I already experienced this when biking between the road narrowing devices just east of Fox and Fitzherbert outside the old PNZ. That is a tricky place to move if there is a car coming up behind. Not all cars give way when there's a cyclist motoring through, riding through. 
By creating several of these along the length of Fitzherbert Street, you are not creating a safe environment for cyclists who must then compete for the same space as vehicles. I'm not asking for a cycle lane, but I do want room to move should the need arise. With regard to the ped pedestrian access to the medical centre from Fitzherbert Street, uh, in one of your written submissions, Ian L. Baker says there does appear to be room for a pedestrian right away alongside Quinoa. I've gone on line with council plans, and yes, it does appear to be the case. Would it be, not be in the interest of council and our community to invest at the possibility of purchasing the easement here? It would be considered well money well spent by the majority of Peterson residents. The proposed concrete curbing outside the entrance to our Saturday market. This is on design map one, just where the Kiwi Rail recently installed the medium. In the design map, it shows two blocks of green concrete, which are narrowing the entrance to the market down considerably. It's making a dog's breakfast, actually. You will have heard that our baker is already looking for other premises. Is it the aim of council to drive the very business that our town is known for to other venues? No. Design map two, Town Heart, on the corner picks and server, it would appear that the corner has been replaced with concrete. It was a garage, it was the, I think some of you will know, it was the big yellow building on the corner, tollway place, it's now been replaced with an ATV servicing business. It would appear that the corner on the map here has been replaced with concrete with a tree planted adjacent to the crossing, a new crossing as well. Has it escaped the planners notice that there is a semicircular drive entrance to the building on this corner, about where the pedestrian crossing reaches the footpath, with the vehicle exit coming out on Hickson Street? The trees planted at either side of this corner will obstruct vision and hide any vehicles which have turned into Hickson Street's public server from the vehicle exit business. Additionally, there is no longer access for people who drive into that business and they have trailers with ATVs on the back, etc. You're killing that business. Okay, are you able to um, make your last point? Your, your it is my last point. Wonderful, thank you. Why is there a need to make Daniel Street one way? There is ample green space alongside the railway line to include a pedestrian walkway and still retain two-way traffic. Currently, many vehicles heading north who see our market or any other shops that may appeal swing left into Daniel Street to park. If they can't stop there, no left turn, and parking spaces outside the supermarket and the trees in the then once again we leave, lose potential customers for our business and we're buying out the parking space. In closing, I would say making our town attractive to encourage visitors is a great idea, but let us first get the infrastructure right. Safe, secure water supply, drainage, and efficient sewage disposal ready to meet the anticipated population needs. Wonderful. Thank you, Vicky, for a very thorough presentation and a lot of good food for thought. Thank you very much. I'll leave that thank you, Vicky. Good morning, Brenda. Thank you um, for you unmute your microphone um, and thank you for accommodating a much earlier time than you were expecting. Fantastic, no worries. Um, hopefully this will be um, short and sweet. I'm not here to kind of like bang on what council does and does not do. That's not my remit. Uh, my remit was to uh, respond to the Featherston uh, master plan. Um, to that, I'd like to thank council and councillors for the opportunity to do the walk around that we did. Um, it was very insightful and it did actually bring up um, a, a few questions. And it was like herding cats. So I appreciate the, the time that you guys took to actually facilitate that. So thank you for that. Um, I do have a couple of notes though. And for me, the master plan cannot actually be considered a master plan because it doesn't actually incorporate all elements of Featherston. And with regards to that, I'd like to actually bring up the commercial side. 
um, this plan is going ahead with all the uh, with all the residential and urban zoning, rah 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 rah, and I get that the commercial zone is going to be addressed at a later stage, but um, it seems to me that we're going rapidly going ahead with all the residential stuff, but it seems like to me I get the feeling that our commercial side is kind of like a, a bit of an afterthought, so we're going to plow ahead with residential urban streetscapes um, which is great but then how do we place our commercial and economic growth into that equation as well so it's probably something to reflect on with, with regards to that um, some of the other things if I can find my document here it is um, with regards to questions four, five, and six, and um, yeah, so, so I couldn't actually fully answer questions four, five, and six because of that element that was actually missing. And I know that we're going to address it, but I can't commit to a document where I can't answer all the questions, fully um, answer all the questions. With regards to the... Um, level crossings. I can't support the proposed changes to the level crossings, particularly on Fox Street. Brandon Street, as I've heard through the various discuss discussions that have gone on today, um, I get the reasoning for that, but again, they do cause impacts. I would definitely, and I probably would have it say that most of the community would actually advocate for the closure of Bell Street instead. And there are so many safety features that allow um, an area for the school to be able to spill out onto at the end of the at the end of a school day. Um, the church for people to spill out out of the church into a cul-de-sac uh, would be absolutely ideal. And also for Anzac Hall, it could potentially provide further parking for for these places. Um, as we heard from a young gentleman, I didn't catch his name. Um, the links to town would probably be more of a reality. Um, and with regards to a traffic impact assessment of Fox Street Rail Crossing, perhaps uh, NCTA have done this. We don't know. They're not telling. I get that. But there's nothing stopping council or even anyone within the community to do a traffic impact assessment. So if there could be the capacity for that to actually happen before we forge ahead and actually make any kind of like strong indications that we're going to make changes to our roads. With regards to the railway station and its current position, keep it where it is, obviously. Um, I used to commute to Wellington, between Featherston and Wellington all the time. I live a mere 900 metres away from the railway station. Um, I don't walk, and there's a really good reason why I don't walk to the train station. Typically, for me, it involves getting up at the, the crack of dawn and getting home when it's dark. So the, the possibility of actually me walking to and from in the dark is, is not ideal for me. The other factor with regards to that is that I actually badly sprained my ankle because the lighting on the streets between my place and the railway station are quite bad. So for that reason, I take my car. Lazy it may, may, may appear to be, I do it for health and safety reasons. Other people that actually use the train station commute from Martinborough and they commute from some of the, the other areas outside of Featherston. And I don't think we, by closing Fox Street, that would be ideal. And I think consideration as to how commuters actually get to and from, say Martinborough, for example, and the railway station. I don't know if anyone's actually done any studies towards that. Perhaps council are able to enlighten me on that, that, that particular area. The other area that I'd like to concentrate is the narrowing of our main street. And I would like to echo of all the voices before me. It's restrictive. It doesn't, it, although it may enhance the, the town for people who are walking, 
the document contradicts itself where it says that it wants people to stop off. It wants tourists to stop and to actually go shopping. Again, I'll echo previous people for me where they've said that people won't stop if it's not easy to stop at. Um, perhaps, I don't know what the solution to that would be, but I don't think removing car parking spaces, putting trees on the road in an area that's already 40 kilometres in speed would actually help. It would actually hinder the growth of any town. And I don't think that that would be in our best interest for anyone. We need more people in the urban areas to generate more money for council to be able to do more things for us. And I think that's pretty much what it's about. That's me in a nutshell. I didn't, other than what I've already submitted, I just thought I'd give you the time to perhaps um, discuss any other things that might come to play. But yeah, yeah, it's been really good watching this online. Um, and some people have said some really great things and made some terrific suggestions. Thank you. Thanks, Brenda. Um, thank you for engaging with the consultation process. It was great to see you at um, several of the events and for, like I say, um, being so accommodating this morning. Councillors, do you have any questions for Brenda at this point? Just the main Hi, Brenda. Thank you so much hey. for that. Um, so, so, so your feeling is that from the people that you've engaged with in Featherston as well as yourself would probably be looking at Bell Street rather than Fox Street. Oh, definitely. The, 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 the payback for that. Been by, by everyone that's been here today so far. So that's just very good for us, and I thank you. Mm. Perhaps uh, maybe doing a survey and saying, how would you feel about closing uh, Bell Street instead oh, yeah. of Fox Street? Yeah. And, and being a bit, bit specific on the questions. Mm. Um, yeah. Kiwi Rail have indicated that they are open to consultation um, between uh, the Bell Street and Fox Street crossing. So we uh, we welcome that next piece of community engagement led by them on this matter. Well, um, I get what Kiwi Rail is trying to do by um, closing down railway crossings, but um, we're not saying no, don't close a railway crossing. We're saying would you consider something else? And I'm pretty certain, pretty confident that the community will back us up around that. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank awesome. you, Brenda. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you for your time. Um, that brings us to the end of our uh, public presentations this morning. Um, I want to say both to those who are joining us online and for those of you still in the room, a genuine thank you for engaging with this process, um, for uh, coming along to the consultation events, for taking what I believe an average time of 45 minutes to complete um, submissions, and for taking a morning of your time to, to join us and present here. Um, let me assure you that both your written submissions and your oral presentations will be deeply considered as we move forward through this process. Um, and so your time and opinions are of, of great value to this committee. So thank you. Um, we also just going to do a quick shout out to Amanda and her team for yes. leading such a good engagement yes. process. Yes. Yeah. yes. Um, so for those that didn't quite catch that, that was a thank you to the democracy and communications team who had led the engagement portion um, of this process and gathered all of your submissions together to um, to present back to council and to make today possible. So thank you very, very much for the work you've done. Um, to my mind, the engagement that we saw through this process um, is certainly the way that I would like to see engagement run for mm -hmm. all things going forward. So mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, we move now from, from public uh, presentation to the master, Featherston Master Plan Hearings Report. Do I have a mover to receive the report this morning? Thank you, Councillor Gray. And do I have a seconder, Councillor McCauley? All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Yes. Yes. All those against, please say no. The motion is carried.
Uh, Russell, would you like to join us? And Nikki, if, if you'd like to join us as well. Um, I know we have Richard and Ray joining us online. Um, Nikki or Russell, do you wish to speak to the report at all this morning? Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, thank you for that. Um, following on from good, very good oral submissions made, and that did very well. Um, uh, the, I take it that the report has has been read or as read. Um, uh, the careful work done by Nippy is one of capturing the background to the master plan work, um, uh, drawing attention to councillors the period of, for, at which um, uh, submissions uh, were open from uh, 6th of December to uh, uh, 18th February, so quite a long time for uh, for people to sit quietly and make their submission. And I think we can conclude that there was a healthy number of submissions, 87 submissions, nice. which um, for a town's master plan isn't too bad when you compare that to the population of uh, our towns and our district. Sorry to interrupt you, Russell. Um, Nikki, do we have a estimate of the number of people who came through the various engagement sessions? Um, we do. Let me just... I want to guess and say it was over 200, but I wondered if you had something a little... I'd say it'd be, through your chair, I'd say it'd be close to that kind of number. I think it was about 50 or 60 at the... Um, community day and then we had the walk and talk that had a pretty similar 30 to 40 number at it. And then the various um the various market drop-ins as well. That's good. We had six yeah 60 people in attendance at the community workshop. Um and then we had around uh, 22 to 38 people at the different Featherston markets. So there were uh, one, two, three, four Featherston market drop-in sessions. So um yeah, between 20 to 40 people there, and then the walk and talk. That's 30 or 30. so. Yeah. 30. Wonderful. Thank you. Sorry, Russell, carry on. Yeah, as stated in the report, 60 people at this at the very active Saturday morning community engagement session, which was lively and, and captured ideas. Um, 23 at the walk around the town, the walk and talk, and... Uh, just in terms of the youth, the specific youth event, 17 youth were asked what the best thing for Featherston was. And um, remember, we tapped into the youth voice uh, for the um, spatial plan in um, 2021. Uh, just in terms of the report, as I say, take it as read. Um, engagement has been done uh, pretty well. It's, it's set a benchmark in terms of are going forward and um, that uh, the, the, the amount of feedback, the articulate nature of the feedback uh, is uh, a reinforcing sign of a passionate community that Featherston is and so uh, with um, long-term residents and new newcomers to Featherston wanting the best for the town. So uh, obviously, we need to get componentry within the master plan correct and respond to um, feedback. Um, and, and the recent feedback uh, spring also springs from the earlier um, consultation work done in um, earlier times. So we have layers of engagement through our work. Fantastic. Thank you. Councillors, do you have any questions for either Nikki Russell or the team online at this point? Absolutely great. Um, just one of the things that hasn't seemed to have come through in a lot of the submissions that verbally was really nice was the reduction in minimum section sizes. Can you guys talk to that a little bit more? So... We haven't been too specific in terms of section size. In terms of the master plan, we've um, uh, our our efforts and vision has been one to to um, create opportunity of new res new residences and housing within five minutes walk of the, the uh, train station. So um, 
we haven't been overly specific in that because um, we need to keep our options open, but we want a mix of we want a mix of housing. Um, and then along with that, we have endeavoured not only to address uh, residential growth over a 30-year period, but we've also, uh, with the help of um, ideas and commitment of Bree and Richard, um, activation of the town for um, economic prosperity um, and um, business needs, mm. hence the use of mixed-use zones, as well as recognising um, and preserving heritage within the town, within a quadrant of the area of the um, master plan. Uh, that question can also be opened up to Reed and Richard as well. So just further to that question, would it be, I mean, obviously there's a whole a lot of dynamics around activation of the town in terms of keeping that five-minute walk to the train station, but would it be fair to say that uh, the focus on not looking at urban spread was also in line with our previous government um, and that that line of thinking actually doesn't apply necessarily to the uh, line of thinking that this current government has. They, this current government seems far more open to uh, urban spread and greenfield development, et cetera, et cetera. Is it, would it be appropriate then, and, and bearing in mind some of the feedback we've received this morning, to take a slightly different lens to the thinking behind the master plan? In terms of? In terms of being more open to uh, urban spread rather than just intensification of development within our existing boundaries? Um, I, I think that's a... A significant point, but um, the although there has been nationally a change of government, um, the onus to provide for uh, future rural youth and protection of highly versatile soils does remain. Um, but I also acknowledge the fact that um, the Mr and Mrs Gange who presented this morning um, which followed from um, good discussion with them at a table with the chair and myself uh, on the Saturday morning was that uh, as land owners and as single land owners for a large portion of land they have the if they are passionate about potential zoning change, then that is something they need to take up with respective professional uh, planners advising them. And uh, we can keep our ears open to that because they rightly pointed out um, the prospective merit of um, providing a retirement village surrounded by um, um, residential zoning to the south of the town. So we need to keep our ears and minds open to that. Um, and the other thing uh, here is, is the fact that um, the master plan is both a, a implementation plan from the spatial plan work for the district, which was done in 2021 by the previous council, so that, need, that needs to be activated. The master plan is the first implementation plan of the spatial plan, and it also sits within the Wellington Regional Growth Work in terms of Nodal developments coming spring forth from Wellington up the coast, out through Potorua, up to Levin, up to Masterton in the form of nodal development uh, in the proximity of train stations. So that's the other factor you need to bear in mind. Thank you. I um, just wanted to check with Richard and Ree and see if either of you wanted to speak to Councillor Gray's question on section sites. There was only one point for me really in terms of <clears throat> the the sort of supplementary question regarding expansion beyond the existing limits was that the whole issue of of the location of the fault lines along the east and west of 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 town and also area, areas of flooding um particularly along the east and along the around the south so the information that we had um in relation to those also sort of underlined that that um 
um, sort of aspiration of just trying to work with an existing footprint rather than potentially extending to those areas. But of course, I did hear this morning um, that it has it sounds there's been some more sort of um, um, local um, information put together regarding flooding on the land that was discussed by the submitters earlier on. In relation to the section sizes, sorry, um, we've identified an area for medium density, which is sort of beyond the immediate sort of environment of the, the, the main street and also the area heading up towards the station. And we were really being led by the work that's been done on the district plan as to what section sizes would be, um, but also recognising, and there's something in the master plan about this, that... Um, Whilst we'd be led by those section sizes, there would be ways that you could encourage development in um, in the town, which perhaps better reflected how people see and feel and you know experience the town at the moment, rather than rather than the cul-de-sacs that are going in that we're seeing um, currently. And thank you. If I could just add to what Richard's comments were, um, the other identification for the growth node was also read like. Uh, led by the regional growth strategy and growth node of Featherston in that document. So it wasn't just a central government matter. And also when we did the foundation document, we looked at uh, potential densities for the medium density zone, just like Richard said. And if, you know, a percentage of those were taken up for development, noting that not all of those sites would be redeveloped, um, then how many houses might be able to be contained within that land holding. So I think one of the things that is important on us to reflect on in light of this submission is to go back to that, to look at what the draft wire upper district plan um, potential lot sizes are, and they're referred to in the master plan, and to see whether or not um, there would be a need or an opportunity to have, you know, both growth at the edge, not where there are fault lines or other hazards or necessarily where, as Russell's pointed out, there are um, high quality soils. But I do think it's important that we reflect on that um, just over the next couple of days and come back to you on that matter. Lovely. Councillor Maynard. Um, I just want to acknowledge something else that the Gangers said um, as well, and that was and, and that was that they they, they had spoken to council and that they were more than happy to follow their, their guidance in waiting until the submission came through to bring this up, to look at, you know, that they, 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 they are um, obviously, you know, have, have a willingness to work with council, which I think is very good. That They also, you know, brought up the fact that they are the one landholder, um, which again is, a, a, is, is great. So, um, and, and I guess... In a way, I, I felt like any guidance that we can then give them in helping them to uh, speak to, or, you, you know, on what steps they need to take to then have that changed, um, I, I think would be remiss and not not help giving them a bit of a hand with with regards to that, on how they, you know, you know what next steps they can take as the as the owners. I just um, that that was that was my feeling on that and. And I see, like, they're literally just at the end of where, the, where, where it was chosen at that time. So I guess that, that is something that it would be good to, good to relook at when it's obvious that that land is, uh, is good space, the proximity that it is to school and to the centre of town as well um, would, would be really good because I, I was hearing it in a way that it was almost like, you know, a, a lot of it for for our elderly, but but also young families were also mentioned there. So people that were wanting to live there, and that the commuting wasn't there, like 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 wasn't their focus on uh, on that. Um, so I think it's a it's a good point because not everybody commutes that lives in Featherston. Um, so, and uh, I think uh, sort of sitting with my representative of the, of the Featherston Community Board hat on one of their uh, overarching concerns for this training is the ability or uh, potential for Featherston to become simply a dormitory suburb and they you know that is a concern of theirs and something they don't wish to see happen so uh, whether it's um, development adjacent to the master plan or the master plan itself I know that they would be looking to for ways that the vent to that. Yeah. Um, I do have another question as well when it comes to with regards to parking. Now, my understanding was that what was a, a you know that kind of narrow focus of driving, but that we weren't actually losing a lot of those parts. Like the so 
I'm not quite sure where all of the suddenly a whole lot of car parks have been crossed off. Could we just clarify if it came up a lot? If that is an interpretation of the maps or a genuine loss of car parks parks on the main street. Um, perhaps if I answer that, there, there is a couple. There's one piece that was raised, um, which actually looking back at the maps as you do after these things have gone out, which has been made green, which I think shouldn't have been green. Um, so there was a little bit shown um, loss there that I think would be less. Um, inevitably, there would be some loss um, in the main street because we were we were showing the additional crossings and narrowings on the entrances to each end. Um, an additional pedestrian crossing and some other narrowings just for, for trees. And you'll see that in the recommendations report, we've, we've suggested slimming back on that and just really looking at improvements and additional and the one additional crossing, improvements to existing crossings, one additional crossing and the narrowings at each end, um, which I accept would still have some impact on parking, but significantly reduced from what was shown on the, the consultation document, having listened um, to people. In Fox Street, I haven't done a count of the numbers, but we are introducing um, angle parking, and generally you would get more angle parking in um, in, a, in an area than you would um, Parallel parking, of course. So I think on yeah. Fox Street, despite the, you know, without double checking the numbers, I think probably on balance, it, it's probably, you know, about the same. Yes, that, that was my, that, that was what I remembered us uh, having that discussion. So I wasn't sure, but perhaps just uh, possibly, it just it didn't come across as clearly in the, mm -hmm. in, in the consultation document um, due to how many people actually raised that. No. Um, it would probably be useful in the final report to have yeah. a bit of an analysis on the proposed loss versus the proposed gain and sort of the net balance. Yes, just to uh, clarify that point. But Thank you. But, 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 oh, so so uh, uh, you can see it just on the on the map there. It actually shows all of that. Suddenly, there's a whole lot of diagonal projects. Yeah. Um, Side by Maria and extra parking by the skate park. Yeah, yeah. So. So all along, all along, just where it starts, but um, from there. So there was some, um, and and sorry, and it's just the final thing was um, having lived in lots of apartment buildings when I, I prior to moving home, um, most of them actually had parking on the on the ground floor anyway. That had to be done in the building of them. So if we're talking about like that intensification, and that there is going to be um, additional housing uh, that will be put up then surely that should be an ex expectation that council would be asking for all of those additional car parks to to also be there and available because that when i lived in you know um and and city good old city living that that was always the case that there were there were actually designated car parks um that were built in talking five or six to, to yeah. building but but whatever we're talking about yeah, it should it needs to be on the you know, on there rather than on the main street. So I think that can probably be looked at as they look at building them, surely. Thank you for that. But uh, there's a qualifier to that because um, in part, Councillor Plummer has, has made a, a key point in that this is not a high density master plan for, for a city environment. This is a town one with medium density. So um Lee and Richard, at this stage there's no plan to have ground floor parking um, as part of the residential units proposed. I want this clear. Um, I, I think probably the main um issue is going to be if we have a mixed use development on Main Street. As I heard it, one of the issues was mixed use development on Main Street would, would would lead to people parking on street outside there and visiting the person in it. But what I'm not um, sorry, Russell, I'm going to uh, pass the question back to you. What what I'm not fully um, sure about is what the parking requirements would be for the residential element of that in the district plan as it currently stands. Um, um, through the chair, or Richard, perhaps I could just add, just before Russell um, replies, one of the things I understand, Russell, is that with this particular master plan, the review of the draft Wairapa district plan has put on 
hold the zonings for Featherstone on the basis that the master plan would guide the new reviewed district plan, which is really appropriate. That means, in my view, if that is the case, and you can confirm that, Russell, it means that if, for example, there is mixed-use development, the master plan can indicate what level of parking it thinks is desirable to avoid the issue of residential parking on the commercial main street, which has been a key theme that's been coming through the submission. Yeah. So I do think that there is an opportunity to respond to those submissions within this master plan in different ways. Russell, is that correct, that the zonings in the draft wire wrapper plan have been put on hold for Fedson? Yes, that's right. In terms of yes, it'll, it'll be, it'll be uh, the guiding, uh, guiding thing for the um, district plan in terms of the uh, strategy chapter in terms of urban growth, so it will inform, further inform the yeah, that's that's great, and that's re somewhat reassuring to hear that there is provision to guide the parking requirements as well. So, thank you for that, Reid. Uh, Councillor Lana. Hey, I've got quite a few. I've got. Oh, oh, okay. I've just <laughs> one. Um, yes, I just thought the, the points raised about sort of the housing for the um, we call them pensioners, but the people without much asset, many assets or income. An elderly, I think, was that was a, a really a glaring omission because we know that demographics is a big part of our population in the next twenty years, and um, so I was really glad to see that actually raised. Um, so we need to look at that even more. Mm. Thank you. I mean, okay. Can I just add to that because I think one of the other common themes that have come through is around the diversity um, and the inclusiveness for Featherston, and I do believe that. Um, some of the principles or even the vision, depending on which vision you really want to go to, can be slightly amended to take account of that. Like, for example, having a thriving, diverse community. And we're, we've got that other vision, you know, the vision we're around um, of workers, families, creatives. You could also have workers, families, individual creatives, um, because we have heard that um, sometimes it, it feels like it doesn't reflect, um, say, the aged or the wider community. And I think that, you know, amendments can be made for that, just like I think there can be some amendments made in response to some of the submissions around, um, you know, the challenge you have of current infrastructure, um, and that may not be articulated sufficiently. So certainly I think there is room for some change there. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you. Councillor Plummer, would you like to start with your first of your list? Yeah, thank you. Um, look, uh, um, having read all the submissions list today, uh, to me there are sort of five key aspects to this whole thing. Um, first one is to do with the main route through to it and how that affects traffic and flow and so on. And, I'll, and I'd like to talk to that. I'll just list them and I'll come back and address each one separately. Um, there's the parking uh, issue. Uh, there's the mixed use uh, and, and the sensitivities that that's going to raise on our main street if we have mixed use zoning. Um, and there's obviously the issue of Bell Street, which seems to be um, almost like 100% um, sorted. I don't think it's going to be contentious at all. Um, we're thinking, um, what's the one, uh, Bell Street versus Fox Street Street? I think that's, that's very clear, so I don't need to talk about it. And the other one is the Grange submission. I'll come back to that separately because I'm sort of in line with Pippi on that one. First, if I talk about the main street and the um, and the street width, to me, the issue here um, going forward is if we're going to see, a bit, um, what are we talking, a 70% increase in population in the next 30 years, um, then you've got an issue with heavy traffic coming down main street. Um, and... Um, that links very closely into the parking, but so I'll, I'll deal with the two together. Um, the, if you have heavy trucks going down your main street of what we're trying to do, and we're trying to remove parking, and we're trying to have a mixed use, all of a sudden you're going to kill main street. You're not going to actually enhance it. It's going to die. So to me, the first thing is really how do you remove some of the um, heavier transport that goes down there and doesn't stop. If you're a dairy owner and you think you're going to survive on a truck stopping to get a thing built, you've, you've got a bit of failure. So if we could remove our heavy trucks off that main street, and I'm, and I'm really taken by Tui's submission here when he talks about a halfway proposal and saying, uh, why don't we divert them down? Um, Revens. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. State Highway 53. So, and, then, and then join up with uh, yeah. State Highway 2 further at the bottom end of town. And I think, you know, that to me would be a real big game changer for 
Featherston Main Street, if it got rid of all those logging trucks, all the stock trucks, all the heavy vehicles that don't need to stop there. So maybe, Russell, that's something you might want to look at, is how could, you, how could we actually implement that? Um, that would then allow us to actually uh, potentially go to angled parking on Main Street, which would double our parks on Main Street. Because the last thing we want to do is reduce our parks because we've heard from every business owner that's come in and all their submissions about how they survive on people. Um, Featherston, unlike Mark Bar and uh, Greater, doesn't seem to have any other option for parking. Uh, there's just, a lot of parking on it. And there's not a lot of parking. And, and we seem to be going down the line of yeah. reducing that. And if you want to have a vibrant community, then you need to be able to have people coming into the community. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there is always that tension between people that live in town who can walk, um, but if we're going to um, bring more medium density, then these people can walk and we need to fix footpaths. But Featherston is more than just the people that live in town. You've got a very large agricultural area around it, of which Featherston is the main hub for all their shopping and all their support and so on. Then you've got all the tourists and people coming in through here. So we want to enhance the, the way to stop it, Featherston. Otherwise, they're going to go to Greytown and Martborough. You know? um, the reality is if you can't stop at Featherston, you will just keep driving. Um, um, and then that brings in the, the mixed use issue on Main Street. Main Street and Featherston is not very long. And if you start bringing in residential issues in there, we already see those residential, and I see them through the alcohol licensing thing, because all of a sudden people go, oh, well, you know, the, the noise issue becomes an issue in the evening and so on. And so people going about their business with restaurants and cafes and bars then have to then abide by all sorts of noise restrictions because it's a mixed use and you end up with that resistance to me, which again cuts down the view of Featherston as a place to stop and be entertained and, and actually enjoy. So don't forget, we're, we're, this is what a 30-year plan. We need to think about not just the people who might be moving in there to live, but also the people who will be coming here for tourism and business because they won't come here and live if there isn't mm. something to do. Mm. And it's all very well for Wellington to go, oh, yeah, there's a train station. I don't know anybody who's going to go and live in a place because there's a bloody train station. Because there's no bit. trains. Yeah. <laughs> um, so so yes. I, think that's, I think that's the best danger of shrinking in the US. <laughs> The last one to me is um, the Grange submission, and I was really taken with that because I thought to myself, they've done a huge amount of work, huge amount of investigation, huge amount of technical data, and says this is a real good spot. And I'm really taken by the fact that one, it's owned by one person. Yes, and two, they want to actually develop this into a city, <laughs> so you, you have an opportunity to really design something for the future. A hundred, hundred different houses in there. I think we should be. We should not be putting roadblocks up that. We should actually be encouraging that. Um, mm -hmm. And yes, it is um, part of the land is category two, part of it's category three. So we need to somehow work around that issue. Um, but, um, you know, if you take everything else I've said into, into the bigger picture of this, thinking at a holistic view of Featherson, if we do things in isolation, we'll end up with a with a dead town, not a surviving town, I think. So let's sit on that. Thank you, Alistair. Any final comments uh, for the team this morning? Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Like, honestly, it's so wonderful to have sat here today and to listen to this, uh, all the submitters say that they actually felt really engaged. And this it's just something that we don't often hear back from our communities um, when it comes to council putting, putting things out to the community. And it was it was the opposite today. So even those that, it, you know, poss possibly it didn't sound super positive, they were only able to give that feedback because they had so many questions asked that they were able to answer. And even in that way, you know, like that that feeling of engagement, it was really to me just this has been a really positive experience for me mm -hmm. um, through this whole Jesus the Master Plan and. Yeah, thank you so much, guys, for all of the work that you've, you've been putting in. That's all I wanted to say. Also. Yeah, yeah, I really appreciate it. Great. Thank you very much. Final comment from you, Russell. Uh, thank you, Pip. Um, on behalf of the crew that have, um, that have gone on this topic and um, previous councillors and current councillors who have navigated the topic, so thank you for those words. Uh, I just wanted to give some clarification point to the chair who asked one of the first questions. 
and um, in terms of density matter, so under 11.6 we have the housing um, topic and residential zoning under the Warrata uh, district plan is um, 350 um, square metres and then uh, one residential unit per 400 square metres of net area thereafter. Um, We've used the with Re and uh, Richard and uh, messaging and in the draft document, uh, medium density uh, residential precinct. Uh, in terms of density, just so we've got clarity, there is no more than one residential unit per 200 square metres of net area. So keep keep those figures in mind as we as we do further work on the uh, master plan, noting that it is principally a residential response and a town betterment uh, plan with that 30-year vision. And we meet again on the 17th of April to do deliberations here um, for councillors to hear with fine thinking and to question and discuss. Lovely. Thank you. Um, thank you. You've taken my last words from the script, which is fabulous. Um, <laughs> so we will meet again um, for those that are watching online. That will be the deliberation portion, which means councillors will have had um, two weeks to thoroughly think about all they've heard today and all that they have read before coming back to debate robustly, I am sure. Um, Councillor Bosley, you opened us with a karakia this morning. Can I pass down the... Closing Karakia. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your time this morning. Thank you. Kwa mutu a mātou mahi mō tēne wā, mana kitea mai mātou katoa o mātou hoa o mātou whānau ai o ki te aorangi. Our work is finished for the time being. Protect us all, our friends, our family. Peace to the universe. Thank you. Thank you.